All right, good evening. We will call the regular meeting of the City Commission for Tuesday, March 10th, 2020 to order. Please silence your cell phone, check your virus at the door, wash your, wash your hands, grab some sanitizer. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Mayor Owen? Here. Vice Mayor Colodi? Here. Commissioner Hartman? Here. Commissioner McGurk? Here. Commissioner Sachs? Here. Thank you. All right, at this time we'll have an invocation, and after that, immediately following, we'll remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Police Department Chaplain Laura Burke will lead us on the invocation. Good evening. Would you join me in prayer this evening? Oh God, we have come with our agendas, our plans, our tasks, our ideas, and our dreams. And we pause uh, to give you thanks for the opportunity we've had to be a part of this incredibly beautiful day. What a privilege it is to live in New Smyrna Beach, Florida. It is a joy for us to even be a part of it. So we pause to thank you for the blessings that we have received individually and collectively, for this great opportunity to share our blessings with one another, and for the freedom we are given to come together and to discuss the needs of our community. We ask that you bless the efforts of our dedicated mayor, our city officials, and our city commissioners who assume this responsibility to lead and direct the affairs and business of our beautiful city. Enable them to work together in harmony and with respect, especially amid conflicting interests and issues. And we pause to remember those that truly are affected by this virus. And we ask, oh God, that you help us figure out what to do next and to trust you in every step we take to uh, assure the safety and um, the measures we need to take in order to protect ourselves and one another. May your peace ultimately be realized in our lives and your joy made known in our task this evening. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. All right. Um, this point, uh, approval of the agenda. Gentlemen, I talked with Khaled earlier. We agreed to probably be in a, um, order to have our uh, uh, fire chief give and, and city staff give an update on uh, the, the COVID-19 and, and the city's measures and everything we know at this point just to make sure we're all on the, on the same page. So propose adding that as item B under uh, announcements presentation. So item 4B. Um, Colin, any other changes to the agenda? Yes, sir. Uh, we would like to move item 6H to move it under 7E. Okay. So item 6H from the consent agenda, that's the find grant application, move to item 7E so we can discuss that. It's, it's kind of related to the item above it, so that makes sense. All right. Any other changes, Colin, on the agenda? No, thank you, sir. All right. I have one resolution that I was going to discuss with you all after Sean's presentation on COVID-19, but you can choose if or when to act on that. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about it then and go there. So uh, first up, though, we got to proclaim Archaeology Month real quick. All right, please join me. So the City of New Smyrna Beach Proclamation of Archaeology Month says, whereas Florida has a rich and diverse heritage dating back 12,000 years, and whereas our history can be traced through the remains of the past left by people whose ways of life have vanished forever, and whereas archaeological discoveries provide a valuable and sometimes singular record of human history. And public appreciation and understanding are the foundation of preserving our past for future generations. And whereas archaeological sites and artifacts are non-renewable resources worthy of protection and preservation. Whereas sacred places inspiring history, African American cemeteries in Florida, has been adopted as the theme for Florida Archaeological Month 2020. 
Whereas New Smyrna enjoys a rich archaeological legacy, enhanced by the, city's, uh, the city performing archaeological surveys and documenting archaeological sites, and by city staff assisting in the nomination of sites to be sent for the National Register of Historic Places designation. There, now, therefore, I, Russell, and Mayor, do hereby proclaim March 2020 as Archaeology Month and encourage all citizens to learn more about the archaeology of our city and to participate in preserving our shared human heritage and respect respect for present and past human populations. You want know, to think of archaeology? I think what are they going to what are they going to dig up from today? Like, what if they don't have an iPhone charger? They're going to miss so much of our history if they just they find the phone but not the charger. It'll be <laughs> they'll miss it all. So um, anything you want to add to this? We have Dr. Uh, Greg Holberg here from the the New, Zim New Smyrna Museum of History. Anything you want to add to? Uh, you know, I would just invite people to come by and visit the Grangemore Archaeology Research Center there in our in our museum facility. Uh, Dot brought uh, some copies of the poster that the share, uh, state has shared with us, and um, uh, we appreciate, of course, all the work that sh uh, she does for us and um, and uh, uh, the citizens for supporting the museum. We look forward to seeing you all out. If you haven't been to the to the museum, I talked to somebody the other day. Lived here for 20 years, and they said they'd never come by. They went in. Just so impressed with everything you all have done there. So thank you all for what you do. We appreciate it. Yeah. All right. We'll grab a picture here. item up again in addition to the agenda just a brief presentation on the city's uh, efforts and awareness related to the, the COVID. Kyle, do you want to kick it off? Yeah, but Mayor, before uh, I thought we have an item that it's uh, item B, presentation for Live Oak traffic calming. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, this one on mine was put in as B, but we can do it in whatever order. Let's just do it. We're, okay. we're here. Let's um, just do this one now. It'll I be just quick. want to give you a quick and then we'll have the chief um, obviously from the city standpoint it's a it's a pre prevention and protection to the public and to the employees uh, staff have met this early this week uh, and I appointed Sean to be the manager for for this event um, as far as the public uh, obviously the uh, using the public facilities it's a, it's a big thing for us so we increased cleaning of the facilities at all the time, especially the parks. So we encourage people to uh, use cautions when they're using the uh, public restrooms mm -hmm. to clean their hands and, and use the water and soap or uh, any uh, sanitizer. Um, as far as the employees, uh, we want to make sure that if God forbid something happen, that we have a plan in place if we have to, to uh, work remotely. Um, and then also we are gathering information of who is traveling abroad or using the airports. So we have some information as that. Um, uh, in case of they are sick, we're asking them to stay home for the employees. Um, if they are suspected of, of having the coronavirus, then that's a different thing. But just for the public, the health department and the uh, emergency management are the ones responsible for the technicality of the virus itself. With that, the chief will give you a brief on that. All right. Well, good evening. Um, as, as I left the office today, I wrote down the latest statistics. So uh, anything I provide to you will be updated as of you know the last two hours. Uh, obviously, something changes, things go on. The uh, coronavirus that we're, that we're dealing with right now is uh, recognized as COVID-19. Uh, the coronavirus has been around since 1960, but this strain is obviously a uh, fairly new strain and has been pretty problematic on the in, in China and the European area. Uh, yesterday, the governor declared a state of emergency for the state. What that provided was uh, protection about regarding price gouging. Uh, it allowed for... Uh, uh, re refills of prescriptions that would not normally be be ready for refill. It allows them for, for uh, advanced refill on those and also allows uh, for different uh, MOUs and vendors and things like that. It kind of takes some of the, uh, the the hurdles of mitigating the problem out of the There are no counties in the state of Florida currently that have declared a state of emergency with the exception of Seminole County. 
um, and not because they have a caseload that warrants it. All they were, all similar counties trying to attempt to do is uh, kind of clear some of the hurdles and allow memorandums of, of understanding and vendor uh, interaction that they would not normally be allowed to have without the declared state of emergency. Uh, we are not there yet. Uh, Volusia County is not there yet. So uh, neither neither us or them are, are at that point where, where we deem it necessary to declare a state of emergency at this point. Uh, 108 or 808 confirmed cases in the United States, 27 deaths so far, uh, 14 cases in Florida, and two deaths currently. Uh, there are also two cases here in Volusia County of those 14 that were that are in Florida, two of them are here in Volusia County. Uh, obviously, anyone who Chief, travels, go ahead. Real quick, just to clarify for the public, I know I've been asked, others have been asked, it came up at the round table of elected officials. Uh, the, the health departments are kind of running point on a lot of this and they are not releasing to to us no one in this room i believe knows what cities those cases are in that's not information that we have access to we're not holding that back that's health department is holding that really you know for hipaa and other reasons um so i just wanted to, to clarify on that we know they're in volusia county you may have heard where they are but if you heard it didn't come from an official source because the health department isn't releasing that information officially is that a correct statement that is a correct statement they obviously with with hipaa being the uh, their primary concern they want to protect the uh city of residents for anyone who may have contracted the that they have confirmed to try to the disease. Uh, they are taking the lead on it. So Florida Health Department, Department of Health, is the lead on, on all of the COVID-19 uh, testing, uh, protocol, things of that nature. Uh, obviously, anybody who is elderly or has an underlying um, issue, such as hypertension, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, uh, heart conditions, are, are a little more prone to uh, the severity of the illness. Um, Currently, the city is providing training to the employees, uh, especially those in maintenance ops or the areas where they deal a lot with public or public facilities. Uh, we're providing training for them, ensuring that those facilities are sanitized as best we can. Uh, also pr protecting the employee from, from illness that way. And we're also, uh, in the city, we're tracking uh, time spent on this event or tracking any expenses. That way, if there is a reimbursable event uh, down the line, then we'll be able to reimburse that from whatever agency uh, ends up or, uh, giving up the money for that. So that's our, that's our steps there. Obviously for the public, uh, avoid touching. Avoid touching your face, eyes, ears, nose, mouth with, uh, mouth with unwashed hands. Uh, cover your cough with a uh, tissue or, di or disposable tissue and dispose of it. Don't hang on to it. Don't stick in your pocket. Uh, clean, uh, clean frequently touched surfaces, you know, door handles, uh, countertops, things that are that we have hands on a lot. Clean them, clean them pretty regularly with disinfectant wipes or, or spray. Um, avoid close contact with people who have or, or who are sick at all. Anybody who is, who is ill, we should avoid close contact with them. Handshaking, hugging, etc. And if you're sick, stay home. Stay home if you're ill or if you feel ill because uh, that will help prevent the spread. That's really what we're asking everyone to do. If you feel ill, you have a fever, respiratory problem, cough, uh, stay home. And don't infect everybody else. All right. Anyone with questions can call the uh, Department of Health at the state. They have a 24-hour hotline. Uh, phone number there is 866-779-6121. And that's a 24-hour um, helpline for COVID, but, and that's run by the state of Florida Department of Health. And I'm available for any questions you all have. All right. So I appreciate the staff giving this update. I really just wanted the takeaway to be, you know, as a city, we're doing everything we can to prepare. Um, you know, as you... If you listen to folks talk about this, you hear every extreme from it's all a hoax to we're all going to die. We're, we're trying to prepare right in the middle of that, do all that we know to do, take reasonable measures uh, to protect our citizens, our staff, our employees, and, and ourselves, of course. So, um, you know, we're, we're doing as much as we can, but a lot of this is being run at agencies higher than us, and we're just kind of plugging into that, similar to, to hurricane preparedness in, in many ways. So we're kind of plugging into this well-oiled emergency response machine, um, but certainly this one, you know, some subtle, subtle differences, so we're all trying to do, do what we um, do what we can. So, questions, comments from the commission, Vice Mayor, just briefly. Uh, two days ago, I did contact our uh, human services person and our manager, and was very pleased to see how that our plans were underway. Uh, we do set the example for all of us around us, so we should be cleaning our doors and polishing everything up on a regular basis. 
I'm one who does not like to spend money, but that is not the case in this instance. <laughs> if we have to put a little extra time in to, to wash everything down, I'm all for it. I know our experience with FEMA shows us how to keep track of our times and monies in case something comes available. If not, do the protective things now. And yeah. that's really what we should do. So, yep. thank you. <coughs> okay. All right. Uh, yeah, Carrie, you had one thing you wanted to bring up. Um, yes, so in conjunction with um, trying to plan ahead, I drafted resolution number 12-20. It would It's a resolution of the City of New Smyrna Beach approving remote attendance of any member of the City Commission for any City Commission meeting scheduled during the existing state of emergency due to COVID-19 and providing an effective date. What this does, it relies on the executive order um, passed by the governor yesterday so it coincides with that expiration date. So if he extends it, this will be automatically extended. Um, but I was just thinking that if one one of you comes down with symptoms or needs to self-quarantine for whatever reason, we need to make sure we can still get a majority of people here for a quorum. You have to be present for the quorum. So it would authorize somebody to call in. The fear would be if somebody showed up who needed to stay home and they wiped out the majority of you, then we would not be able to establish a quorum moving forward if we needed to. Okay. So we can um, act on that after public comment and allow anyone who wants to speak on it to speak yeah. on it. Okay. Question, Mr. Mayor. For sure. Carrie, that standard has been established by the state? Well, the yes, the executive order is number 2052. And so that, that's what this is based on. So 2052 allows you to suspend the rules, but just in the interest of formality and transparency, I, I drafted something for you all to consider. Thank you. I think, yeah, the specific rules of order can vary widely across towns. I mean, some towns allow remote already, some don't like ours. So uh, yeah, that was, I think that was good thinking by Carrie. I hadn't thought of it. All right. Thank you, staff, and certainly any questions, direct them to staff and the other agencies. Item C, Live Oak Calming. Who's doing that presentation, Colin? Okay. My name is Missy Gents. I live at 1407 Live Oak Street, and um, we're looking for some help from everybody. Um, thank you for the privilege of allowing us to be here tonight. We're very concerned about the traffic situation on Live Oak. As you know, Magnol Magnolia Street has added speed bumps and in turn has pushed all the traffic to Live Oak Street. In fact, we were told that the traffic on Magnolia has decreased by approximately 60%, give or take. That traffic has now started using Live Oak, making it very congested and basically dangerous because of the speeding. With Magnolia slated to have, slated for two more traffic bumps and cushions, one at 3rd and one at 10th, that will push even more traffic our, we, our way, we fear. All of us have watched and waved at speeders to slow down, been flipped off by many only to see them speed up. We're very concerned. Um, the speeding situation came to a head on the after, late on the afternoon of February 22nd when a Pizza Hut delivery car came speeding down Live Oak Street, a neighbor waved, actually this neighbor, waved and told him to slow down because he was appearing to go about 50 or 60 miles an hour. When he did, he, he sped up. As he flew by, flew down the street, my cat was on the edge of my neighbor's house yard across the street and he was looking at something in his phone and looked down and swerved and hit my cat. Um, Bones, that's his name, and then drove off. Three of us immediately reported it. One neighbor even called and told the manager on duty that he had a video showing the speeding car, the screeching brakes, and him actually hitting Bones. I have not been able to listen to it. My neighbor across the street also saw it and came to find me. But let's take Bones out of the mix. It's a cat. We realize cats and dogs sometimes will be hit, unfortunately. That could have been a small child, a kid on a skateboard, someone working in their yard, because we, you know, I'll get to that later, but we have no sidewalks or anything like that, so our easement is right there. 
or even a little old lady like me, okay? Video has been sent to the mayor and the commissioners, and I think some of y'all have received it, for our area of the speeders. In fact, one of, the, one of the films we have is a new Smyrna Beach truck, city truck, speeding down our street. So it's not just unique to, any, to others. Um, but let's look at the facts. I have some facts that I'd like to share with you that you probably know. Magnolia has speed bumps. We're only asking for three stop signs. One at 4th, one at 7th, and one at 8th. Live Oak has one stop sign at Smith, but not another for four blocks at 3rd. And that takes into that warehouse area going out that way, which makes it a much longer block. There's no street cut there. Then there is not one at one until 6th. So that's, we've got one at 3rd, one at 5th, at 6th, and one at 3rd, and one at 6th and no other signs after that. On Live Oak, we also have the hospital. Also, we have the emergency entrance for ambulances to get into the hospital, not to mention the employees of the hospital who park across the street and have to walk across the street against traffic and depend on us to slow down and let them cross. So that adds another thing to it. Plus the new cultural center, the library, and the Episcopal Church at the end of the street of Live Oak, which is adding a school, which is going to cause more to be there. Unlike Magnolia, Live Oak is not a wide street with sidewalks and curbs. Sidewalks are only on one side of the street, and there are no curbs, which can block people when they're going off the road. On block, on, on, also on the block between 6th and 7th, we have 14 children. That's just on that one block, not to mention the number of children on the other blocks. Palmetto is the same width as Live Oak, and their speed limit is, is 25, not 30. One of our neighbors did extensive research. She went on and found out research across the United States on this, and the speed limits, like our neighborhood, the average is across the United States 25 miles an hour. The traffic strips have been placed on Live Oak between 6th and 7th to judge the speed. We were told they would take an average of that speed. That brings down the severity of those cars that are flying by at 60 miles an hour, and they are. And this is not a concern to just a few neighbors. It is a concern to 90% of them. We know because we took petitions door to door. We found that when we knocked on doors and spoke with our neighbors, they were thrilled that we were moving forward with this. <coughs> Some even reaching for the petition before we had a chance to finish explaining to them what was going on. Being cut through for Dixie Highway is a serious issue. It's cut through there, as Magnolia was, and Palm Palmetto is. One we wouldn't wish on any of you. Using Live Oak, Magnolia, Palmetto, should not be a cut through, it should be off limits, bottom line. We're asking for stop signs at 4th, 7th, and 8th. Someone told, a, told one of our neighbors we might get one, but certainly not three. Seriously? With a new paving, we look like a speedway. I mean, we look as good as it does up at International Speedway. It's just fast and slick. And it's not just teenagers speeding down the street, sadly enough. The Pizza Hut guy was a 60-year-old man. Okay? We need your help to make our neighborhood safe for people to walk their children, their dogs, or just take a walk down the street. We need you to stop this before someone, child or adult, is hit and seriously injured, and this will be on your neck. We need you to help us make our street, Live Oak, as safe as those in your neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Sachs, this is your... Yes, unless you would like to speak, sir, I have uh, David Jonick. Oh, sir. Just here for, if you had questions, questions about... Yeah, okay. Speak, sir, Thank you. We, I, I am well aware, and I'm sure my colleagues are well aware of the dangerous situation you have in the South Mainland neighborhood. It did start with a petition on Magnolia. Magnolia is a wider street. In different ways, it is more different. You have visual constraints on your street. I actually have video of cars, the same videos that you have. Thank goodness we have Nest cameras that take pictures of front lawns and people at their front door. It's actually taking pictures of cars speeding down the street. My heart was broken when I found out your cat was hit. That could have been a child. 
Yeah, you could have been. It's... Yes, and as, as well as animals, they're part of the family. And you're my neighbors and have become my friends and my constituents, and I, I can't forsake you. And I hope my colleagues see the, the urgency of doing something for Live Oak as well and hope that it doesn't bleed over to Palmetto and Riverside. But we know it might even do that. But I would encourage my colleagues to do what you have asked for, and that is to put at least, at the very least, put stop signs on 4th, 7th, and 8th. Now, we know they may not be warranted or justified, but it turns out they actually do break up traffic a bit. Cars may speed off from stop signs, but again, they do break up traffic and cause people to divert because we know people just want to keep going. Uh, people will go 10 miles out of their way to just get to where they want to go if they don't have to stop. So in, in an effort to keep your neighborhood safe, I definitely support wholeheartedly uh, your request for stop signs at 4th, 7th, and 8th. Uh, I'd like to make that motion to my colleagues uh, and hope for a second. I have a motion to second for discussion. Place stop signs at fourth, seventh, and eighth, and I have a second discussion. Commissioner, ma'am, condolences for your cat. <clears throat> I got to tell you, my cat and my dog are like kids to me. Well, he is. He's had two surgeries so far, and he's he's he, doing good. So he made it, though. He made it. Oh, wonderful! Goodness. That's fantastic. It is. Well, thank you. So, um, tonight is tonight just informative. Or are we taking action? I don't have any of the petition or any of the information. Was any of that done or given out? Yes. Uh, Commissioner, a petition was uh, circulated, and it's a sizable one. It's compelling as well. Okay, what I'm asking is, was it, uh, was it administered? Do I don't have a petition. Uh, we do any have one. Do have, there's one in your mailbox. Okay, when was that sent out? I emailed it out yesterday and put the vanilla folder in your mailbox okay all right perfect I thought this was pine street yeah this is pine street <coughs> that's pine sorry i'm sorry yeah we we do have your petition we, we did feel the stop lot the, the stop signs would yeah. be a less expensive way to start yes i did something similar on faulkner not too long ago so i, I the, the one discussion that i want to have is when we started this with magnolia our ace we prioritize not moving this problem to other streets and neighborhoods. And that's exactly what we did. So I don't want that to get lost in the discussion that we did something. We have a criteria. The criteria, we, you know, we may have done, we did what we did on Magnolia. And I, I'm disappointed that we stuck you with this problem. And unfortunately, now that we've done that up here, I don't see a remedy other than getting you stop signs. Um, my question is, do you, when you say you need a stop sign on 7th and 8th, that's one block from each other. The reason being is they're coming off of, well, you know this. Mm -hmm. yeah. At this point, just to put it in general terms, if, if you're on Magnolia heading northbound, there are six opportunities to slow down between the combination of speed cushions and stop signs. That same distance, that same number of blocks on Live Oak, there are three stop signs. Human nature, behavior of drivers are going to take the path of least resistance. And that right now is Live Oak. Because you only need to slow down, stop three times versus Magnolia where you have three stop signs, two speed cushions. Okay. Uh, um, and unfortunately, I don't, I don't have your petition. So let me ask you a question. One of the problems we had with Magnolia was we over a stop sign was requested the person who lived on the corner didn't want it so then we put it in and then we had to remove it do you have people who have signed off on the corners of where those stop signs are going to be yes we do great furthermore between 5th and 9th street we have a 90 percent acceptance or approval rate for 97. not only 97 not only for stop signs but for additional speed calming devices, traffic calming devices if needed. Well, I, I, and I understand, and I like, I like your approach. I want to take some baby steps and see, do the least we have to to accomplish the goal. Um, but I think as a discussion on the dais, I think in the future, this is, we, we specifically said we won't just move the problem. 
because the next street that's going to come in is going to be Riverside. So um, that's unfortunate. I'm not sure that we researched and did. Um, I think a holistic study in the area would have been a better approach before we did anything because I think common sense said when we stopped the traffic going on Magnolia, it was going to kick over to Live Oak and Magnolia and, 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 um, and, and Riverside. So I don't think that this ends here tonight, unfortunately, which is the stop sign on Live Oak. But, um, but I do appreciate the work you've put into getting the petitions and getting your neighborhood involved. And I apologize for moving that problem over to your street. Okay. We had a motion, second. Other discussion? Yes. Uh, hang on, Vice Mayor. I'll just going to comment. I was kind of afraid this would happen when we did Magnolia because uh, we didn't look at the whole neighborhood, all four of those streets that parallel each other. Uh, you're going to get the same amount of people coming down them one way or the other. You can't chase them all the way. They'll still go down there. Uh, I wouldn't be in a position to approve your request tonight because I haven't had a uh, report from our, our police. I would like them to come back with a report for the next meeting uh, so I can, uh, you know, uh, take in all the facts with it. I know right now, I, I don't know if you were here earlier, but I'm from Zone 1, which is Beachside, and right now I have four requests for stop signs and speed studies on Peninsula, Pine, and Cooper. Everybody knows that this commission is trying to be very receptive to improving our traffic conditions. But uh, we got to look at each one of them individually, and we have to have more of a protocol. Uh, often the speed studies come in and say, uh, as one did recently, that we should raise the speed limit on the street. So we have to come up with a real plan. I know uh, Commissioner Hartman wants to look into the uh, traffic manual, uh, which would be a great help in that. But we also have to consider uh, not relying totally on those type of standards because of our neighborhoods. And perhaps we would like to put in a few more stop signs than would be, I use the term, justifiable by the uh, federal standards for these traffic type of things. So I, I personally would not approve it tonight. However, I would like to see it come back to us after we have looked into it. And I don't mean looked into it for two months or three months. Okay. It should be addressed. And should be addressed now. Okay. Mr. Hartman, any comments on the side? No, my concern also is the traffic study up for the... Or, could we have it by the next meeting, or I mean, we just uh, uh, hey, hey, hang on. Let's um, let's let the presenters talk. Yeah, the, the traffic study was completed. It was, uh, I believe, it was eight days. The the strips that the the traffic counting device was removed yesterday morning. So I don't know how long it takes for that data to be fed up to you, or even what your criteria is and what you're looking for from that. So if you could share with us what criteria you're looking for that would maybe change you from a, a no tonight into a maybe or a yes next week. What What is that exactly that okay. we, do, we need to, to provide? Hey, it was Commissioner Hartman's time, so I'm going to... My point is that manual, what could the manual be presented by the next meeting or... It, the manual could be presented, yes. Okay, because my... Now, just back on the study... The study was done, if you recall, after we did the uh, measurements on Magnolia. Yep. We have done them after the fact on Live Oak and Magnolia. Okay. So that was, how long was that? Okay. So we could present that tomorrow. But the traffic manual, we could bring it back at the next meeting. Okay. Because, uh, like Commissioner Clody, I would also like to have that information in front of me, along with a copy of your petition. I've received absolutely nothing about Live Oak. Um, no signatures, no petition, and certainly no video, nor have I seen the traffic study. So I'd be interested in receiving that, that information before I made a decision. Okay. Vice Mayor, you had a follow-up? Well, I know we did do a follow-up, and we did do the traffic study for the speed, and I believe the number of vehicles. 
uh, but where I'm going with it is a strict application of the traffic control standards that exist now would not <laughs> warrant a stop sign. They just wouldn't. But we have to take into account our local conditions that may warrant those stop signs at other places. I'm not opposed to stop signs uh, in general. Uh, I am opposed to too many of them because then people, especially four-way stops, they tend to uh, kind of drive through them, do uh, half stops. So, But I would like a, a staff opinion as to what to do on that. I, over this last week, and I, I just happened to drive through Live Oak very slowly. Uh, and up Magnolia. You me for that. Yeah. No, you didn't yell at me. I, I just happened to have a sports car and was going very slowly and enjoying the whole neighborhood. So uh, I stopped at every stop sign. But I could see where there are long stretches of road without any control. Drivers sometimes become complacent. And to gather their attention, you may have to put in an extra stop sign. So okay. I would just like to see the results of that. <clears throat> okay. And if, and if, sorry. If you're considering speed as well as part of the traffic study, just one remark is that there are more signs heading southbound on Live Oak saying that there should be no vehicles over one ton versus speed limit signs. So there's three of them, two speed limit signs. Heading south on Live Oak doesn't seem quite right. Okay. All right. So um, thank you both. I think we've covered all the questions we might have for you all. So we're going we're gonna to finish business. But thank you. I appreciate the, the time. appreciate the effort you put in the presentation. So um, we'll, we'll finish discussing the item. But so um, I have a comment, Mr. Closing Chair. comments. You've heard your, your colleagues. I think you've got a couple of concerns. We do have a motion in a second, so we, I'm, I'm going to call for the vote after this, unless you, you've heard your colleagues' comments. So, so however, however you'd like to Well, since proceed. I second that, I'd like some comment on that. Okay. I'd like to make a recommend. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Then I'll come to you. So in the interest of public safety, uh, we studied that whole neighborhood when we decided we wanted to do something for Magnolia. And I'm wondering, what more information do you need? Uh, I can tell you this. Whatever you would consider besides a stop sign and a speed hump or a speed limit sign, which would do absolutely nothing, stop signs, speed humps, are indicated by traffic engineers. They are the first line of defense. If you do not want to or cannot spend millions of dollars to re-engineer the street, which is the only other option you have, you have to consider stop signs and speed humps. The people are asking for the simplest thing. Now, I just want to add for the record that when Commissioner McGurk came with a petition, he got no question or qualms from me about placing stop signs in Faulkner. And I thought it was most appropriate that we did that since we had no other alternative but to do that. Neighbors were made a small percentage safer. If you guys don't support it and want more data, hopefully staff will provide it. I'm surprised and uh, not pleased that we don't have that data tonight. But uh, regardless, I want to thank the people of Live Oak for coming and being so brave to stand at the podium to plead for their safety because uh, I understand what you're going through there. I, I knew that neighborhood has a problem. It has a problem from cut-throughs, people diverting off of Dixie Highway, disobeying our laws, putting our people in lives in jeopardy. I see kids playing. I see parents telling me they won't let their kids play in their neighborhoods, in their front lawns. The elderly are riding their bicycles there. This is a, a lively, thriving neighborhood that we need to protect. I don't know what more information you need. I, okay. I have a second, so let's vote. Mayor, thank you, Mayor. You know, I made the second for discussion. I'm going to be in favor of a stop sign for them because we basically screwed them over and we said we weren't going to do that. Uh, all right. I, I, hang on. Now, I, know, I know everybody cares. Just let us have the discussion and then we'll be done when we're finished. And we, now we realize, you know, we can't go back and reinvent Magnolia. But on the other hand, 
I think that what you'll find is support from your commission. But what I think you're hearing from your, some of your fellow commissioners are, hold on a second, we're missing some of the, we're missing all of the data that we're supposed to get. The procedure is missing for us. And that's what I'm hearing from my fellow commissioners, is that we just want, we need to follow a set of procedures to do this because we have so many requests. We don't have the information that has taken. You see, we're all kind of looking around for something. So what I'm hearing from my fellow commissioners is, wait a second, let's move this to the next meeting so we do the proper procedure. And I think that that is the appropriate thing to do and the respectful thing to do for the fellow commissioners who are asking for that. I've already told you I'm going to support it and why, but I think we need to acknowledge the, 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 the procedure that needs to be in place from the fellow commissioners. And I would ask you, as someone who seconded it, said I would support you to, to rescind your motion to the next meeting, if you would. Okay. Commissioner, you know, with, without objection, we approved the stop sign for Faulkner. I saw no data for Faulkner. It was all right in front of you. No, I you saw had it all. I had a petition. Yes. That's what I have. And a, and a speed study. Well, you know, we have speed studies. Do we have any support from staff, gentlemen? I think I mean, just, really? All right, hang on, Commissioner. So the, the, the speed study is finished yesterday? Okay. I mean, I, I think, you know. It wasn't provided. It was just finished yesterday. I, don't, I think they got to have some time to turn it over, so. So, we can call for, you had a motion and a second. The seconder is not pulling his, his, his second, so I can call for a vote. Uh, you'll, we'll see how the, the votes go, or we can delay to the next meeting. Are the neighbors willing to wait? We can wait as long as you're okay with waiting another week, and then we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed that I will too. there sir. is not an incident on our block. I will leave you with that. I mean, if it was easy enough for Faulkner, I've got... Hard copies of petitions, if you would like to receive them tonight, to make the voting a little bit easier, I have them in hand. But if you would like to delay it, that rests with you on your decision to not vote on it tonight, or to continue and hopefully mayor. provide us with the safety measures we need. If it makes it any easier, Mayor, I'll, I'll, I'll rescind my second on this, so we can do this in two weeks when we have all the proper information. I'm not sure if that's parliamentary or not, but... However, you want to move forward. Okay. Vice Mayor. I'll Mayor. make a motion that we place this on the agenda at our next regularly scheduled meeting. Well, we. Okay. We I'll see. We, a hang on. We, we, we got a motion on the table. Does it have a second? Can we withdraw a second? We, we, they're always just. With Drew a second. All right. We drew a second. Yeah. So, do I have a second on that motion? The original motion. Commissioner Here. Hartman. Oh, on the. Not no. on the original. On the original no. motion to place it as of tonight. I'm not hearing a signal on that one. For, for the sake of doing something to protect the neighborhood, I'll second the motion to read it, to discuss this at the next okay. meeting. So original motion dies for lack of a second. Vice Mayor's uh, motion to place it on the next agenda received a second from Commissioner Sachs. Received one from Commissioner Hartman. All right. We'll let, we'll let I Sachs. I don't care. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so be on our next agenda. Um, be on our next agenda. Uh, just, um, yeah, we'll talk about where to put it on the agenda. So, uh, for I didn't comment on this one. My my comment is, gentlemen, I think to to us, to staff, uh, but to us primarily because we're we run point on this as much as anybody. We've we've got to come up with a way that this doesn't happen. And you know, I, I think. We just we've got to come up with a better way. So um, otherwise, it's going to continue to be like this. So uh, this is a, this problem is not going to go away. We're going to keep chasing it as we have more and more development around us. Um, so we have to come up with a way that we agree to how we will handle these, how they will come before us, at what point the agenda they'll come. You know, it, a lot of things. So I'll I'll talk to staff about some ideas I have, and we'll maybe talk about that at our next meeting as well. So.
So, Mr. Mayor, could we please repeat the motion? So there was a, it was, a, it was a motion and a second, and the motion was to place this on our regularly scheduled meeting. What would that be, uh, the 24th? 20, 20, 24th. 24th. Um, for, and at that time, we'll have all the agenda, we'll have, have all the studies, and it'll be basically the same, the same thing, live oak traffic calming, but we'll have all of those data points that, that uh, the other commissioners requested tonight. We'll have the results of the speed study, and at that point, we'll be able to... Um, I didn't hear folks that didn't support it, so I think we've got the support. I think it was just kind of checking a box thing, so I, I can't... I am dismayed, gentlemen, that we had an item and we have no support supporting information from staff. Mayor, point so, of order. So, yeah, we've got a motion in a second. And, I, yeah, so the, the yeah, I'll preserve comment on that. Just clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. Next item up is public participation. This is your chance to provide comments on items before your city commission. Be given a three minute time limit. Um, and the one ask, to ask I have of you is speak to the commission, address us, not the audience. And um, those in the audience, you may hear stuff you agree with, disagree with, no cheering, booing, yelling. No banners, no, no, what was that Venezuelan thing, the Zuzu, something? Anyway, no, <laughs> none of that stuff. Let's keep it professional, please. Deb. Let me do this, 200 North Pine Street. Uh, I want to say I do appreciate all of the effort and time uh, put into the parking meeting that we had previously, and at that time I commented on the petition that I had submitted for a stop sign. Uh, I guess I'm apologizing, maybe I did it at the wrong place. But what I would like to know is because I was told if I got 75% of the residents to sign it, there would be a stop sign. Now I'm hearing that there has to be a protocol. I just want to do the right thing, and so I would like some clarification because I didn't know I needed protocol. I knew I needed signatures. I got signatures. So could, part of, part of. could and I, I get it. It's a bigger issue than my street or their street. It's many streets. We're all concerned about safety in our neighborhood. That's... That's the issue, and I know you all know it. I've, I've preached it. You've heard it from many. But I'd just like some clarification so that I know to do something or not do something or move or what do I need to do. So <laughs> could you please don't, clarify? Don't. I mean, if not now, if you could at least contact me and let me know what the protocol is I need to follow yeah. for a stop sign. Okay. Or put it on next time's agenda and give me one. Thank okay. you. And I think what you heard tonight was that we, we agree with you. We need, we need as a body, we need some more clarity as these continue to, to come before us. So, uh, but don't move. Don't do that. We like you, Deb. Any others for public participation? Yes, come right after him. All right, if you want to come after this, please come on down. We're going to try to move quickly. Yes, ma'am. Hi, good evening. My name is Terry Kachi, and I am a business owner on Canal Street, and my main concern is outside the front of my building the um, mentally ill homeless man uh, basically lives there and my clients are very uncomfortable the hand waving the shouting the you know a lot of women that come in and children that are afraid I've um, called the police a couple times they don't really they say if he's not doing anything illegal there's nothing they can do. Well, he basically lives on the bench in front of the building with his chair and all of his things. And then come the rainy season, he actually comes under the little, you know, overhang by the front door. And I don't feel I need to just keep shooing him away and shooing him away. Um, he's not in his right mind. And I don't want him to come snapping back on me either. Um, I'm alone in there a lot too, so um, I don't know which way to turn with that. And the police, you know, they do what they can, but I said, you know, just can anybody live on Canal Street? I mean, can we just take our carts and just hang out? A client of mine said she saw him sleeping at 3 a.m. on the picnic table in front of the brewery straight out, flat out, taking his, you know, siesta. So, you know, my people are afraid, and I'm afraid, and it he smells, and 
et cetera, et cetera. And I don't know where to go with it. I've been there seven years, so do I move? <laughs> Everybody's he, proposing moving. I don't know. Because he's not. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for coming and sharing your concern. I can tell you we, we touched on this briefly at, at a meeting a few weeks ago, and this is something I think the commission's aware of. It's a, a growing problem. Unfortunately, as you, as probably the, the police chiefs explained or others, it's it's not a simple problem. Um, there, there are you know, there are things we can do and things we can't do. Um, so, but we are, uh, I know you don't want to hear that we're talking about it, but <laughs> the, the, rea the reality is that we, we have to have some discussions internally about what we can do and how what measures we might can take. Um, so in, in the meantime, there, you know, I, I don't have an answer for you right here tonight. I wish I did. I wish I could tell you we'll, we'll go solve it tomorrow, but uh -huh. I don't have an answer for you tonight, but I can tell you we're, we're aware of it and we are, we're working internally on some things that will help us solve this problem. Um, I think it's, been made worse by some things other cities have done. It's kind of pushed some of the population south, and so we're working on making sure it doesn't stop here. Mm -hmm. So it, I don't know if you can help me at all, but what can I do, or what? So, so I would say, um, if, you, yeah. if you don't mind, yeah, so police chief will give you his card on your right. on your way out here, and he'll connect with you and see what we can, Mike can do in the interim. Right. But I appreciate you coming today, because it again clarifies for us this is something we have to keep pushing forward. Okay. So thank you. Right. Chief, if you'd, thank you. Yes, sir. Hello again. I'm Steve Welfer, a 222 Flagler Avenue lifetime resident. I'm also on 106 North Pine Street and live at 220 Florida Avenue. Um, earlier, we had a workshop for parking and deliveries there on Flagler Avenue. Uh, one of the unloading things that I would like to talk about is getting the trucks off of Flagler that's hard to have a the smallest truck is 28 foot and we have on Pine Street we have lots of parking that we can pull on to and deliver and also on Cooper right off of Flagler Avenue that should be considered as pulling in there also I would like to discuss uh, I handed out to all the commissioners uh, LDR 604.09 which is talks about parking <clears throat> um, that is our main parking problem as we have allowed for years now people to come in with a restaurant coffee shop with 40 seats they have seven parking spaces that they lease and then they all of a sudden within a couple of years have a hundred and fifty seat restaurant with liquor and nobody's paying for it. This is tens of thousands of dollars out of your pocket, the city, in parking revenue. Plus, I've paid over $30,000 now toward parking that is true parking. Um, it never seems to get talked about. Even tonight, you talk about enforcement, what we can do right now. Right now, the LDR says that that is illegal what they've done so even if we can't close them down which I don't recommend I love them all they are all wonderful places but you should at least charge them for the parking spaces that they're supposed to have for a 150 seat restaurant you need 60 spaces this is a special parking area so it's 50 percent so 30 spaces so when you see someone come in only with seven spaces that they lease and then all of a sudden they have a 150 seat restaurant they should have 30 spaces but they don't you're missing out you're missing out and I'm being charged now you're wanting to to put uh, deliveries there on Flagler Avenue I want to open a little breakfast spot I hope that I'm not paying for their parking and your delivery truck is parked in front of my spot too. I hope that now enforcement you can start directly tomorrow. Follow the LDR, go down, do an audit, and see what true parking they have for per seating. Thank you. Thank you. Others who wish to speak? Scott. I don't know about you guys, but I just can't get past one of these things. <laughs> I just got off a cruise ship, and every oh, place you oh, walk, what are you doing? Police chief. I had to say it. I had to say it. 
It was days ago, and everybody got off just fine. Um, I, <laughs> Mayor, commissioners, uh, everybody, thank you so much for what you guys do. I cannot imagine you've been doing this since what four o'clock this afternoon. Um, that that's a long day to sit in those chairs and have to to deal with all the things that are coming up. Um, I didn't get here early enough to speak on the at the parking meeting earlier, so I'd like to say a few things about some of the parking issues that have come up. Uh, I chaired a committee to look at trolley service in New Smyrna Beach for three long years. Um, Deb Denny's, Tony Otti, half the people in the city, a lot of commissioners who weren't here at the time, some who were. Um, at no time did anybody consult with me over the proposed new service that might be coming up. I have all the financial data. I can show you all of the different types of vehicles we looked at, everything from golf carts. My buddy ran the pedicab business on Flagler Avenue for a year and a half that failed. Um, I have a great deal of experience and background in this. I still have all the data, all the numbers that we ran. I'm happy to share that and discuss it with anybody who wants to. The challenge is today the same as it was then. The city and the county are going to have to pony up and put up money into it to make it work. It is not a profit model. It doesn't work. Or a private industry would have stepped in and done it already. It does not work financially. So unless you're willing to put in several hundred thousand dollars a year, it's not going to happen. So just be prepared for that. That's, that's the way this looks, and it looks that way in every city we contacted. There's not one that runs it as a profitable business. So think about that. A um, couple things about parking on Flagler Avenue. I'd just like to, to let you guys know a lot of this, our debate went into two hours versus four hours parking on the avenue. Four hours is where we always landed so people could go and have a chance to have a meal and do some shopping. I'm not opposed to meters. Traditional meters are ugly, so like the ones on the corners are not so bad. But I like the idea of being able to say, look, I got my ticket. I only stayed for four hours. I didn't have to pay. Stay for four hours in a minute. You want to make that $20 for four hours in a minute? Totally get it because it's definitely killing people to have them come and park and then walk up to the beach. I mean, that is not a viable uh, way of doing it for any of the businesses on the avenue. Um, I have parking spaces in my office that I would be happy to loan to the city. By the way, I love the new lights. Um, my insurance people have said it doesn't matter what the city does to indemnify you, you're at risk. My attorneys have said no chance in the world do you let somebody else park there who's not there for your business. So something to think about. And my last thing would be on the delivery trucks, if you use the map that you have already, you don't have anything far enough east to service the business members who are on the east, I'm sorry, west, on the west side closer to the bridge. I think uh, up there in front of the shuffleboard course is the closest. So please pay attention to the folks that are on the west-hand side. Um, they're going to need that service as well. Okay. So thanks for your time. Thank you, Scott. Don't nobody shake his hand. All right. Any others for public participation? All right. Seeing none, we're closing public participation. Next item up is consent agenda. Gentlemen, reminder, we pulled item H. City manager pulled item H. We moved that H is in Hector. We moved that later in the agenda. Would anybody like to pull any of the other items, beginning with the vice mayor? Mr. Mayor, item F. Item F, okay. That's the, uh, yep. my sometimes agenda is the wrong numbers. Approval of uh, proposed package, package offerings. offerings. Okay. Is that it? For you, Vice Mayor? Yes. Commissioner Sachs, anything to pull? Ditto for me. Okay, item F as well. Commissioner I'm good. Kirk, Commissioner Hartman? L. Item L. Okay. And I would like to pull, I rarely pull an item. Do y'all know that? Item B. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know what order we go in. I guess we'll go down the line, although I hate to go first, but item B that I pulled. Uh, actually, sorry, let's get can, approval for the remaining items. So it's with the exception of B, F, H, and L. Do I have a motion to approve consent agenda with the exception of those four items? So moved. Second. City Clerk, uh, if you'd call the roll. Vice Mayor Colony? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right. First item up that was pulled, item B. Um, 
we talked about this briefly at our last meeting. This is the, uh, the projects we're going to submit to River to Sea Transportation. Um, I shared at that meeting my concern on this list. We have the, that east-west east connector project south of 44. Um, my concern is this, gentlemen. We, we've gotten a presentation, at least I've gotten, I think most everybody has a, a, a presentation that staff has put together that we haven't talked about that yet. We haven't dialogued about that yet. To, as a group on that. We haven't talked to the public about that. Um, the numbers in that don't line up with the numbers that we have and that we're putting to River to Sea. And um, I, I don't think, um, I think that cart is just ahead of that horse. And so I can support everything else in there. I just think that one item should be pulled out. And I, I referenced the earlier meeting where we, we referenced, I forget which item it was in that meeting, but we talked about that, oh, it was the, the, the beach on ramp. So he said, you know, we had gone to the county, pushed this to the county, and then all of a sudden when it actually started coming through, there was this huge public outcry. Um, and, you know, therefore we left, our, you know, the county with a little bit of egg on our face, um, you know, because they thought, they thought they were supporting what the city wanted, and it turns out we had to walk back on that. My fear is we would find a similar reception, uh, be it cold or lukewarm at best, to that particular project. I think we have 50% at most of the people that I would talk to would be supportive of that, and so we're just wading into waters that I don't, I think, again, carts in front of the horse. We haven't done enough talking about it. We haven't, as a group, talked about some of these options and what we're actually supporting with that line. Um, so I'd like to see us support it with the exception of that one line. Staff has told me they could either put some other projects there or, frankly, we have quite a few projects that are going forward anyway without that. So those are my concerns on item B. Vice Mayor, comment? I understand your concerns. Uh, I have looked at the uh, presentation prepared by our uh, our staff, which is very extensive. Uh, I couldn't approve the uh, any of the options as they were shown, but I think that the need is truly there to um, to improve access into the Corbin Park neighborhood. Uh, I probably shouldn't use this term, but this is probably could be characterized as a wish list. And by the time we get down to that item, we can refine it and approve it. But it kind of gives you a place to get some funding. Okay. Comments? Questions? Um, I understand everything you said. And it w makes all the sense in the world except this agency is a long-term agency. Anything, any funding you ask for on TPO takes 5, 10, 15 years. It's really at our pace. What's different about TPO as opposed to the county is we specifically go to somebody and say, hey, we have a problem, do this. And that was different. TPO is a long-term planning agency. Um, quite frankly, it doesn't matter if it's on it or not in the context that we can put it on whenever we want, but if we ever want to go down the road, the longer it's on the project list, the better we have a shot of actually getting funding. So I think you're, I think that should alleviate some of your concerns. Um, by no sense of the imagination is this money or, or we, the money we're requesting is not only usually not accurate, but as this goes down five, ten years down the road, um, the numbers change dramatically. They just want to have something on it to start with. It's a starting point. Um, but, you know, listen, as your TPO representative, I can go either way on this. If this was something that, you know, was people felt really important to pull it off, it, it doesn't, you know, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a big deal one way or the other, other though when we do decide or if we decide to do something, yeah, definitely want it on. Okay. So this was on the list before I got elected, and there's been absolutely no movement on it whatsoever. So I would rather leave it on the list to hold that spot, and then it also puts pressure on us to do something about it. So we need to have those conversations, and we need to say pieces, parts, all of it, none of it, 
and then move on after that. But to take it off the list and lose our, our spot or eligibility for future funding, um, we had a, another project that you said was 20 years down the road. So it's like, I, I really don't want to lose the spot because yeah. it's one of those things that have been there for a long, long time. I'd rather leave it there, make us, kind of force us to talk about it and do something one way or the other, and then we're done. So, okay. I, I mean, I just, I would rather see us have that conversation first, and then so that when we go into it with the TPO, we can be be behind it and not be caught in the same spot where we end up with folks lining up with the TPO saying, well, the city did this, we didn't want it. And I know we've been down that before with some projects in that general vicinity. Um, I know it because I was one of the people that went to the TPO <laughs> as a citizen. <laughs> so I, I just, I think we're wading back into that. I just wanted to throw it out as a caution. I don't want to dwell on this item. So with that, do I have a motion to approve item B on the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor, a comment. Sure. Uh, we saw approximately four options. None of them were tasteful to me. It seemed like we we're trying to make a straight line out of a really crooked one. And I, I don't know what effect an east-west connector is going to have on those neighborhoods. So I wonder, a question for any of my colleagues or staff, what are the ramifications if we do pull it and decide we've come to a consensus, we've asked the citizens what they want, and we put it back on the list for the following year? You were asked to withdraw the project out of the list from the TPO. And you can put it back on the following year, correct? Yeah, we can. Yeah. But you're getting, let me tell you, I had a call the same day that we had our visiting session on, at 2 o'clock. And the person lives in Corbin Park, and the answer was, will you please find a way to give us some relief so we're not captive to our neighborhood? Now, don't get me wrong. This is the mayor's neighborhood, and this is Randy's neighborhood. <laughs> now, what we're talking, so all we're talking about is a future road or two, a network that will link people, let people in the back of that neighborhood get out or around. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and again, I don't want to speak for the mayor's and Randy's uh, neighborhood where this is going to affect, but the, um, the elephant in the room is, as the mayor mentioned, uh, depending on what road network you're talking about, um, it's it's very controversial, and this doesn't touch anywhere near that. So, yeah, we well, we went through that. You can add it, you can take it off, but if you ever want money, when you decide, there's no commitment to this. You can take it off at any time, and here's why. There's a whole bunch of people fighting for a small pile of money. So when you take your when you take when you come off the list, there is no hurt feelings because the. There is an endless amount of road projects throughout the county that people would love for people ahead of them to come off the list. So <laughs> Let me just interrupt and pose a question. You're on the TPO, Commissioner. Uh, so if we leave it on the list, we can leave it as four possible routes? We don't have to give them, let's say, Tage or... No, there's, actually, there's absolutely no route. That's why it just says east-west connector. There's, there's no route. All we're identifying is saying is in this general region, we may want to have some road connections someday in the future. And that's it. And funding for that can be 10, 20 years down the road. So, yeah. it, I mean, it really is a big ado about nothing on this list. Um, I think it's much better to keep it on. But if people want to pull it off, that's fine. And we'll just start back at the bottom when we decide to put it on. So, okay. Mm -hmm. well, thanks. So, uh, again, I don't want to dwell on this item. We got a lot of other stuff to cover, but I wanted to share my concern. I can't support this list with that on it, but that's just one no vote out of four, so it's not a big deal. But just making that clear, or I'd love to support it if that item was off of it. So, with that, I'd ask for a motion on item B. I make a motion that it remain on the list. Um, okay. Just a, one comment sure. on that is I have. First of all, I think it's a misnomer how it's labeled uh, because when I read the list called the East-West Connector, it was certainly not what I envisioned when I looked at it. Uh, neighborhood connections, perfect. Why we want to put more than one additional connection to drive traffic through the neighborhood, I could never see. I think there should be a second way out for emergency uh, purposes, if nothing else, because if you have an accident out on 44 
and then you need to have emergency services in your neighborhood, you won't get it. If yeah, they have a second way in the back, then it would be good. So but my motion, that problem persists across our city. No, it doesn't. It does. I can point you to a lot of neighborhoods it does. Not a neighborhood that has 700 people. I, mean, I live on a one-road right. neighborhood. But All right. You made a motion to yes. approve it as, as submitted? Second. I have a second. City Clerk, if you call the roll. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Vice Mayor Colony? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Mayor Owen? Nope. All right, next item up. F, who pulled that? Colody, Vice Mayor. And then I know Jake, you had some comments as well. Uh, I read the proposal. I see that the uh, uh, our Visitors Bureau and everybody associated with it and the hotels is trying to uh, induce people to come in and have large group rent rooms. I just don't think that should be at our expense. I do not see why there should be a uh, reduction in the income we receive in a facility that operates at a deficit. I would be much uh, more likely to approve something like this if they included features like they would have, uh, they would provide ride share from the hotel into our facility to cut down on, uh, on parking and driving. But I don't see that. Until I see something that has some benefit to us, um, in the way of uh, cutting down on traffic, maybe then I would consider it. But as we're set up right now, no. Okay, Commissioner Sachs, you wanted to pull this as well. I'll let you comment also first, and then we'll. Yes, lady, uh, ladies, I appreciate what you're trying to do, and that's basically market the Brandon Center, package it with hotels. Um, my deepest concern is that we're offering it to a select few for a lesser amount with 25% reduction. And the, the presentation that you offered, with all due respect, is rather sparse. Uh, there are details that I would have liked to have seen, like the term, the length of time we're going to offer a project like this. Um, are, are we wholesaling this? Can the, can the uh, ad authority, the visitors bureau, or the hotelier raise these prices and make a profit for themselves? Can that possibly happen? And, and to me, it, it just doesn't seem fair. Let's say another hotel came in and said, we would like to do the same thing, uh, and they would not get that discount. So in the interest of fairness, I can't support it as, as drawn up. Um, there's a few other items, but I won't, I won't belabor the discussion. So question for you, Nancy. If if others would, and we got a few that are called out here, but if there were other smaller hotels that wanted to take advantage of something like this, what would the, what are your thoughts on that? What's the process? It would be the same. Um, we just asked, uh, we have been meeting with Spring Hill and Hampton Inn um, because they have the room capacity. Um, we limited to 75 rooms or, or more um, because the Brandon Center is a large facility. Um, this is not just about... Um, us giving a discount, they would be also, and they have the flexibility as a private company to change their rates. We, as a public entity, we have to come to you each time. I, you know, and that's why we're coming to you now to be able to create package deals for conferences, for small conferences, for meeting um, com corporations to come down and enjoy our area. Um, and I think that, I mean, we've worked very hard on this, and I, I believe that this is something that would be very attractive to companies. And I'll let Debbie and Amy speak. This has been very collaborative, like Nancy said. And this isn't to discount the Brandon Center. It's actually to just enhance the sales efforts for it and get quality corporate business that would then sustain the hotels, all of the hotels. This isn't just about the two that are here tonight. It's about any hotel that wants to work with the packages like this. It actually creates a one-stop shop, shop, you know, where the meeting planner calls the hotelier, and they don't have to say, well, let me call you back because i got to call the Brandon Center and see if I can negotiate this to meet your, your budget. Look, if the meeting planner has the budget and they can take the rate as is, that's beautiful. But in most cases, because 
they want to come here and they want to stay with the rates and they want to buy stuff and they want to go to the restaurants and do an uh, off-site dining thing it makes it very hard sometimes to meet budgets so that's what this is intended to do it also will help the uh, shops on canal street and flagler uh, we saw that recently with one group as well as um, all the attractions and the museums and everything else here so it's truly an economic impact um, it's not meant to just say the city's going to pick this up and discount it 25%. This is a negotiation for meeting corporate meeting planners. We're also striving to do Sunday through Thursday weekday patterns as well as off-season packaging. So, you know, it's hard when the businesses are not pulling in enough money for the rents and things like that. Um, we want to make sure that there's an economic impact for everyone. So I'll yeah. see if any of the hoteliers want to say anything. Just... Hang on, let us just go through and then we'll bring in if we need comments. Mr. Mayor, please, Deb, another question. Um, so we're not really in the business of providing discounts for hotels. We're concerned about the Brandon Center. If we're having a problem marketing the Brandon Center, shouldn't we lower the fee for everyone, 25%? Uh, and, and there's a discrepancy I, in the uh, charges. Weren't, wasn't it $1,000 not... 800 and we were going to discount it to 600 is that right that's a question for nancy nancy yes that's for the large room it's, this is an example of something that we would do um the the large it's the it's for the ballroom that's what it's called and during the week it's 800 dollars for the ballroom only not at night yeah that's a different price thanks nancy okay other other comments or questions from the commission my my comments are this. Um, I, I don't remember exactly when, but a few months ago, it was actually on my topic for the uh, the other day, the all day thing that we I didn't get to. But um, we we challenged staff to go and try to increase the revenue and the, the bottom line of the of the Brandon Center. The reality is the majority of the Brandon Center expenses are fixed, so any incremental revenue adds to the bottom line. If the thing has anywhere below 80% vacancy, I don't know what the exact number is, but I'm guessing we're not at 80% full. If it has anything below 80% vacancy, this is the type of thing we should be leveraging. My only concern is, you know, I, I certainly don't want to pick the winners and losers. So if there's other hotels that want to participate with this and they can bring the volume to it, um, you know, but for me, this is the kind of uh, entrepreneurial type thinking that I, I've heard the, you know, it's funny because we want to, we want to complain the Brandon Center is not making a profit, but then we get a proposal in front of us to help try to just generate some heads and beds for the Brandon Center and, and other local businesses, and and that, you know, get pushed back on that too. So, Mayor, I agree with you 100%. Um, you know, these are basic business principles that we're applying here. I do agree with the Mayor that we need to give some kind of incentive to other people too. The only rub that I have is whenever anybody tells me the Flagler business want this or it's good for them, I don't believe it. I want to see them in here. I want to see them come to this meeting and tell me this is what they want. Because we have so much crankiness and we have so many miss. We have people saying yes, no. Scott, I challenge you to get the ones that want it. Come. Tell them. Tell them we would like to see their faces here supporting something. Thank you. They're all watching online. So I had a similar concern that you did, and I asked Nancy about a particular hotel, and she said they opted not to participate. So they did, did reach out to other hotelers, so it wasn't just um, isolated to a couple people. So um, I would support this because I agree with you. Any money is better than no money, and any exposure is better than no exposure. So if if... We can benefit from it, and the hotels can benefit from it. I don't see it as a bad thing, so I would support it. Last comment. I just don't see how we would benefit by it. Uh, you take a $200 discount, you have 75 rooms. That's $2.67 per room. I think that the hotels should take that into account. Uh, if we have a, a better plan and some other features offered to us, other benefits, I could support something like that. I just can't support it at this time, especially being we're running a deficit. Okay. Can I answer to, the, to that? Sure. Okay. Sure. So we actually have two hotels that would have 75 rooms apiece. So on that proposal, and that is just a proposal example. 
So the Hampton would tote 75 rooms and we would tote 75 rooms. And along with your 20% discount, I'm taking my rate down considerably more than 20%. And so is Lily on her side in that example. Another thing too you had mentioned as far as share rides. So we already have a program worked with Be On Time Concierge with Jeff that he is working on to quote so that in this package, and if you read the bottom there, it says that it will include a... Um, package with Be On Time to tote these guests that are coming in from these hotels to the Brandon Center and back. So we're not having to worry about adding any traffic to Flagler Avenue. Another thing on Flagler Avenue is if you just look at the last group, Midwest C, that Spring Hill Suites brought into the area and also stayed at Hampton, they bought out Outriggers. They bought out the top of Flagler Tavern. They did nothing but shop up and down Flagler Avenue, they bought out fishing charters. They bought out um, do you see no, the shuffleboard from oh, the city. That's right, yeah. right there. So your city, you got money from bringing in groups like this that covers the, what did you just say, two cent per room? Two dollars. Um, two dollars, two dollars per cents. room. So, I mean, that covers that. You are making up the money. You're bringing in these larger groups on a time frame that we are struggling and everybody is struggling to fill. So this puts a whole sales team together. Your community is coming together, and we're working to sell what we have together and shop local. And bringing these items in would have the people shopping and keeping your local shops open. If you don't have somebody coming in and shopping at these shops, they're not going to survive. They're not going to stay open. We're not going to be able to keep it local like we want to. It is what we have. It is what makes us New Smyrna, is to have these local shops and to have this community. And your community is coming together to try and help keep this. Okay. I don't, so. Thank you for those comments. Mr. Last Mr. comment. A quick comment and a question. Uh, if we were to do a proposal like this, are, are you tying up four out of seven days with this proposal? That's very possible we would be, yes. It kind of excludes other people from wanting to use it if they, I, it's I mean, It's a first come, first serve basis, and it's what we do now. We actually, actually, we placehold for our nonprofits, um, you know, their events. That, that know, also so, gives, yes. Nancy. Which, which is local, and, and, you know, we do give them a 25% discount also. No, I know we, we give uh, nonprofits a discount, but everybody else was supposed to pay the same rate until this change is offered. Uh, you know, we, we did have someone come with a very nice assortment of venues if we would just uh, ramp up the <laughs> electronics and uh, the sound system and do a few small changes at the Brandon Center. We could have been offering some really nice venues to the people, but, but now we're, we're doing a public-private partnership, which I'm not so comfortable with because we're tying it up four out of seven days and we're offering a deep discount. Uh, yeah, which, I, 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 you know, my it, feelings. So if, I mean, I guess the counter though is even at these numbers, if we rent this thing out four out of seven days consistently throughout the year, this thing's not turning a profit, which is unheard of for a, for a center like that. So I mean, I haven't run those numbers, but just... Just spitballing here because again our problem right now is it since empty too much we need people in there that are paying and whether that be via concerts that others have proposed or however we get there I, i'm i'm all for i'd rather try some things and it not work so i guess the last question i would have on, on this for you nancy is i think vice mayor colody pointed this out i mean is there an expiration date on this what's our what's our exit ramp on this let's say this is doesn't work or you know we have some other idea that's running the brandon center out for double the revenue how do we how do we get out of this? How do we unwind this? What's the termination clause? If, if you would like to do a, a termination, I would suggest we do it at least for a year. Yeah. Because otherwise you're not going to get good data on anything. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, I, sure, briefly. Just very briefly. I just wanted to let you know, too, as the Visitor Bureau, we are marketing the Brandon Center all the time. We go to conferences. We go to trade shows. We have a meeting planner book where we've got a database of 8,000 meeting planners, big, good corporations like that are, aren't going to run over the city or anything. We live here, too. We understand the product. We love it. We want to protect it. 
So we're trying to bring a nice luxury type market here so that everybody wins on this. That's all. Yeah. So. Okay. Last comment. I don't doubt your intentions. They're good. And I'm sure it's some type of program like this would be beneficial to both parties. Um, are you willing to guarantee a certain number of days that you would rent? Yeah, no, there's no guarantee. That's where Thank you. This, one, this gentleman here is saying, you know, would it be held up? It's not going to be held up because there's no way to guarantee that we would sell the room. This is just giving you an extra chance to sell the room. Because you've got everybody else that's helping out. So it would be upon availability, just like anything else. Um, okay. And that just gives you more opportunity. It opens up a door of opportunity. Thank you. All right. So, gentlemen, let's uh, move forward on this item. Um, motion to approve uh, item F. Would the motion maker consider putting a, uh, a one-year term on that? Or at least some kind of a termination? We need an exit. We need an off-ramp somewhere, just in case, to me. But it's your motion. Sure. Okay. So I had a motion to approve as presented with, I don't want to put words in your mouth. <laughs> I do, but I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> to expire in one year unless negotiated or reapproved or whatever. Yeah. And we should probably look at that three months or so before that because I know these things get booked out. I mean, I've been working on in my other life with the conference that's been planned for six months or more. So, all second. right. We had a motion. We had a second. City clerk, call the roll, please. Commissioner Hartman. Yes. Commissioner McGurk. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. No. Vice Mayor Clody. No. Mayor Owen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Next item up, item L, Commissioner Hartman, you pulled. Okay, I pulled item L because I think this would be a great opportunity for us to do a trial run with our trolley system, whatever it would be, if, if city manager thinks that maybe staff could have time to look into that. Um, it's an eight-hour event, seven-hour event, plus, you know, probably the last hour or two. We could provide uh, event parking either at that waterfront promenade or the MDC Center if we could negotiate something in the meantime, but certainly at the uh, temporarily at the AOB. It'd be one event. Uh, we could talk to the vendor of the bus system to see if they had something that they could either loan us or short-term lease us, or um, even look at leasing 15 passenger vans to see if, in fact, this would work. Um, I certainly would hope that the FABA would also buy into this and maybe um, offer some discounts if they use the van system or something like that. Um, so I think it's something that we should explore as the, one of the alternatives to the parking study. Um, this would be an event where Flagler is closed, and it's an evening event on a, on a, I think it's on a Thursday, right, Nancy? Yeah, so it's a Thursday. So it may give us an opportunity to, to do a trial run to see how things go. So I, I would, I would support if staff would, um, look into this and maybe come up with something. We have a few months out to look into this and see if it's something that is doable and then bring it back to us. Okay. So like, a, like a pilot project. Like a pilot project. Yeah, with, with low, low upfront overhead. Yes. Somehow lease it, borrow it, something, steal it for a weekend. Yes. Mr. Mayor, question for my colleague. Uh, Commissioner, where would they park if we try to shuttle run? Well, I, I don't know if we could... If we'll be able to get the MDC agreement in time for that, but we certainly could park them at the AOB site. It'd be a one afternoon kind of thing as a trial run um, in, the, in the grass lots or we even in the trailer parking because it starts at three in the afternoon. Most of your boaters are gone by then. So, um, well, You're no. right. it's a Thursday afternoon. So we'll, we'll have to just play it by ear and see. But I think it would give us an opportunity to Market and offsite par offsite parking. Um, we certainly could use um, social media or whatever to advertise it um, to, to get the people th through a sh some kind of a shuttle system. And if it falls flat on its face, we know that it's not going to work. Okay. So, uh, just to further the discussion, I can't support using the AOB, but I think we haven't had a determination from uh, Chad Truxall and the Marine Discovery Center if we are actually allowed to use their lot because it is FWC property. Have has staff determined that we can? 
Well, I think we had a discussion with Chad some time back. Obviously, we have to go to the foundation and the, to the state. Um, at some point, I don't think he said that they will object to it, but we didn't have anything formal. So if the commission wishes, we could reach out to Chad and, and ask him and get back to you at the next meeting, at least to, to let you know that that site is, is usable. That, that's important because okay. we keep talking about asking them to use their lot, and I don't know if we have that approval. Okay. So, yes, Vice Mayor. I just, my mind goes back to when we talked about the AOB site, how we didn't want to turn it into a parking lot. We didn't want to go forward with any type of approvals to use it. We didn't even want to study it. We don't want to submit any grants. And here we are offering as a parking space. There's no other place where the shuttle would go to. I'm not suggesting a permanent parking place. I'm suggesting eight hours, one evening, <laughs> to do a pilot study to see if a shuttle system would be doable or not. We may run into issues where it's not even doable, um, so it, it would be a mute issue. I'm not turning anything into a parking lot. People You're putting cars on it. Uh, people park uh, there anyway. Uh, yeah. There's cars there. Anyway. All right, gentlemen, we've we got item L. Uh, Commissioner Cartman has added that we could use this possibly as a pilot program. I suggest let's two two separate motions. Do we have a motion to approve item L as presented by staff, and then I'll ask for a second motion. To, you, to potentially use this as a pilot program. Uh, do I have a motion? motion to approve L. Okay, yeah. motion to approve L. And I have a second. City Clerk, call the roll, please. Commissioner McCurt. Yes. Commissioner Sachs. Yes. Vice Mayor Colodi. Yes. Commissioner Hartman. Yes. Mayor Owen. Yes. All right. Do I have a motion to ask staff to come back to the commission? We're not approving any finite plans today, but just come back to the commission with somewhere before August 6th with a proposal for a test run of this and we can figure out details of where and who and all that stuff at that time staff can put a few parameters around what we can and can't do to have a motion to uh, ask staff to do that so moved second to the clerk call the roll commissioner mcgurk yes commissioner Sachs. not at this time no vice mayor colody yes commissioner hartman yes mayor owen yes i, I just have to point one thing out sure my agenda says it's going to be on April 18th. Mine says August 6th. Once again, my agenda's out of date. Item L. L? Well, on mine it had Mine April says April 18th. 18th. Saturday, April 18th. Are we? Uh, gentlemen, item L, August 6th? No. Sure. Which one? Is it April or August? All right, we're going to go with August. Oh, I pulled H. I'm here, and I shifted everything. I pulled H to add administrative when you guys had moved that, so it shifted everything up. Oh. So I can move it back. So it we're, we're talking about Lagunacy, right? Or no? No, we're talking no, about the, the Shrimp Festival. The Shrimp Festival. Shrimp Festival. <laughs> well, I'm still for it. It's okay. <laughs> I was trying to figure out. I was going by this. The shrimp and seafood festival is what. So we the were published about. agenda. So where is everyone seeing the other date? Just out of curiosity. On the iPad. On the iPad. I don't know. All right. It's happened before. Okay. Okay. Just a mistake. All right. We'll get through it. One way or the other. All right. We got. It, it I think that uh, your suggestion that the staff look into it for the August date is fine. I don't think we need a motion on that. We already did it and voted. We already on. did it. <laughs> <laughs> How did I vote? I don't even know. Oh, dear right Lord. I'm about to dismiss the rest of this meeting. I think we all have the virus or something at <laughs> <in> this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, voted for the, I voted for the first one. No, yes. it doesn't matter. We're good. All right. 7A, the approval of Second Amendment to the Housing Authority Agreement. Do we have a staff report on item 7A, please? Kyle, is that you? Yeah. 7A, we've moved oh, on. Oh, it's 8. Never mind. Sorry. <laughs> We're past the consent. Yeah, we got this. Kyle, is that you? All right. He's trying to get to it. 
so the, the earlier confusion while he pulls that up, that's probably my fault. We made some last second changes to put that new item in that I'd asked to this, the, the coronavirus update. And so I think that shifted some things in the software behind the scenes. So that's, that's on that's on me. So don't don't blame staff for that one. Kyle, what you got? All right, Mayor. Um, the Housing Authority is requesting an amendment to the agreements with the city and the CRA. Uh, construction of affordable housing in the Demick and Julia Street area. The original agreement was entered into June 26, 2018, and that was for the purpose of assisting the Housing Authority with the construction of the new affordable housing units in the area. The first amendment was entered into October 21, 2019, for the purpose of allowing the duplex consisting of two bedroom units with garages for phase two site, which is north of the phase one site at the northeast corner of Julia and Demick. Allowing the monthly reports submitting by the Housing Authority to Volusia County to satisfy the requirements, section six of the original agreement for reporting, the timing of the CRA payment and no administrative or operational costs were eligible for reimbursement. And so the Housing Authority is requesting a second amendment to the agreement to specify the following. The CRA will reimburse the Housing Authority up to 75000 per the terms in the original and amendment agreements, including the use of funds for infrastructure and other construction-related capital costs. Administration and operational costs are not eligible for reimbursement. And then, as Part B, up to $68,000 will be allocated toward the pavement of the dedicated right of way that serves as the driveway for one of, or both of, few, of phase two units. The CRA funding for phase two was anticipated in the prior agreements and has been budgeted in the current year CRA budget, which is $313,000. It's anticipated that if selected as a tax credit project by the Florida Housing Finance Corporation, the balance of the match for the Green Lawn Project would come from the next year's budget. With that, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you might have. Questions for staff on this item? If not, do I have a motion to approve the Second Amendment to the Housing Authority Agreement? I so moved. that motion. Or second. It's second. Whichever yeah. way. <laughs> Kelly Pick. One of them did something. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Colletti? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right, Second Amendment has been approved. Item B, lien amnesty request for property at 409 Mary Avenue. We're going to have city staff give a report first, and then we'll hear from, I'm assuming you're the applicant, so we'll hear from city staff first. Go ahead. A code enforcement received a lien and received request from Luigi Tumio, property owner of 409 Mary Avenue, formerly known as Hotties Coffee, in New Smyrna Beach. On 9-14-18, code enforcement conducted an inspection of 409 Mary Avenue. At the time of the inspection, the poll sign was found in non-compliance of Section 801.30, subsection A-10. The sign faces were missing. A notice of violation was mailed, certified mail, to the property owner and accepted the notice of violation on October 18th, 2018. There was also a copy delivered to Hottie's Coffee as well. And code enforcement was contacted on the same day, October 18th, 2018, requesting an extension of the original compliance date of December 13th, 2018, due to he was leaving out of town. A permit to remove the top portion of the sign was submitted on January 3rd, 2019. And then on February 27, 2019, the special magistrate found the property owner and or entity in violation of section 801.30 subsection A10 and gave until March 13th, 2019 to bring the property into full compliance. In the event the property was not brought into compliance, a $100 a day fine would be imposed on the March 27, 2019 hearing, commencing on March 13, 2019. The permit was then withdrawn, the permit application was then withdrawn from the system, and then a fine of $100 a day was imposed 
at the hearing on March 27, 2019 for noncompliance. The property remained in noncompliance until May 5, 2019 for a total of 50 days. The fine with interest totals $5,230.93. Mr. Tumio is requesting to appear before a city commission to discuss a reduction of the code enforcement fine. Staff does not recommend reduction to the fine. Okay, um, so I'd like to do this. If, you, if you're okay with it, we'll have questions for staff. If the commission has any, then we'll let you speak for a moment, and we may have some questions for you, and then we'll uh, we'll begin our discussion. So any questions for staff or clarifications of staff on the commission at this time? Or if not, we can hold those until later? Yeah. It seems like... Did you have one or no? Yeah, in the, because in the document it says a fine of $100 per day were opposed to the hearing on the 27th of March for noncompliance. Yes. So, but yet you started the fining uh, at March the 13th, which the, is almost two. The 27th was the date of the magistrate hearing. Okay. We can backdate the fine to the compliance date. Okay. So that was the compliance date that was given. So when the fine was placed, it started on the compliance date that it was supposed to be in compliance. Okay. okay. Seeing no other questions for staff, so if you'd like to make a... If you have any brief comments, and then we'll have some discussion for you. Uh, as of the date of February the 27th, when they said I was in violation, I had put in for my permit on January the 3rd. I didn't receive my permit till over two months later on March the 5th. So I don't know how I could be in being not in compliance February the 27th when I didn't receive my permit until March the 5th. I checked with the city and they said I could not do anything with the sign myself since I was not an operator of the business. It is a rental unit. I got a sign man who put in for the permit on January 3rd, received it on March the 5th, and immediately started after he got the sign within two weeks of working on the sign. We worked on the sign ever since we got the permit and had the sign company working. And in the meantime, I'm being fined $100 a day every day that we're working on the sign. And I'm in compliance, I felt myself, I'm doing everything that they asked me. When they found out that the sign itself could not be repaired, which I already had the forms made for the plastics for the inserts, I went to the city and, and we talked to Mindy. And Mindy said that it had to be not in damage of 75% or more, that if it couldn't be fixed, then we'd have to take it down. So I told the sign man, we checked on a new sign since it's rental property, and it was too expensive, and I already got over $3,000 in it. So I told him to go ahead and get a, <coughs> a crane and have it taken down, which I did. And it took a while for him to get a crane company. They don't come just overnight. And they came and took the sign down, which cost me another three grand. And they had to have the pole cut down. And everything was done in a timely manner. And I believe it was April, which I have from here from the sign company. And uh, everything was done on... Excuse me a minute. Okay. Four twenty three, he canceled the permit and the sign was taken down on four thirty. And so and then I'm still being fined after the sign was down. So I'm being fined while the sign while we're working on it. Before we got the permit, I got fined after it was down. I don't understand why 
I'm being fine because I did everything possible that I could do. And I worked with the Code Enforcement Board. I called them all the time. I went down to the, there and I'd go to the planning and zoning. And I just feel it's very unfair that they fined me $5,000. First it was 6000 Then they said they made a mistake. It's 5000 and the dates just didn't correspond. Okay. So I'm asking for the forgiveness of the 5000 I've been in business here for 38 years. Okay. All right. Thank you for coming to present that. So the commission will now discuss. If we have questions for you, we'll, we'll make those, uh, we'll direct those to you. Um, but unless we direct them to you, just let the commission discuss. Vice Mayor, comments or questions? Uh, uh, just a question. Uh, of the $5,000 fine, Give me the beginning and the end date for those. Staff. Staff, yes. The beginning date would be Three March 13, 2019, and the end date would be May 5th, 2019, for a total of 50 days. Thank you. Okay. Questions, comments, yes, sir. Hi. Um, I'm trying to understand. He 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 said and the the staff report says he applied for a permit on one three nineteen. Is that correct? Yes. It was then withdrawn. Well, the permit. Yes. What? By the applicant. Later. Yes. It does not specify. Yeah. The report for that you need to provide for the permit does not specify who. Uh, would withdraw it, but normally it would be the applicant, yes. Okay, so, I mean, would staff, sta no one else would, I mean. Yes. So, Commissioner, just to clarify on that, the um, the permit was submitted on January 3rd. It was approved on March 2nd. A revision was submitted on April 17th, and then on April 23rd, the applicant submitted a notice of permit cancellation because the apparently the, the existing steel on the sign was not strong enough to handle the weight of the new sign faces. So the permit was withdrawn on April 23rd. So uh, I know Chief's going to kill me. I'm going to have to leave the building with an escort, not him. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that gives me heartburn about this case is I have someone who is actively trying to do something through this process. You know, a lot of times we get this and they don't do anything. And they show up here like, oh, I never knew. And I know how we can get. Anyway. What was the re to the applicant? What was the resubmittal for? You submitted a permit on January 3rd. Then you resubmitted it for a new permit? What was your understanding, Luigi, of your, uh, of the, of, what, what happened? Well, they, he said he couldn't fix They couldn't fix it. So he pulled the permit, and, and we took the process of taking it down. That's why the permit was pulled. Then that was in, in, uh, uh, in on the 23rd of April. And in that time, we were waiting on the crane man to come and take it down. So... Between the 23rd is when he canceled the permit and the sign and everything was done on the, uh, down by the 30th. Okay. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Uh, I'll, I'll share briefly. Or actually, I do have one question for the, the uh, business owner. Uh, walk me through from October 18th. So code enforcement came out on 9-14, September 14th, 2018. Um, accepted the notice of violation October 18th, 2018. And then it kind of picks up at January 3rd when you go and pull a permit. So we got a couple of months there. What Walk me through that. Well, the sign was damaged from the hurricane. Right. And I was in an argument with them on getting my sign repaired. They said it was, was not attached to the building. Them. So my Who's the them? Uncovered. Insurance. You're, you're arguing with your insurance company? Right. Oh, who? Okay, got it. So that was, then I, then I got the notice, and I went down to the code enforcement board and asked for an extension because yeah. I'd already made arrangements I, to go out of town. Okay, I, I got so it. I'm just trying extension. to figure out that one small gap. Okay. 
All right, Jim, I'll, I'll delete off on this one. I, you know, I, I know we have, this commission particularly has been pretty hard on, uh, in, in these cases. I'll tell you, you know, been in business here 30 years. I think to your point, this happened, hurricane related damages, trying to work through if an insurance company is going to pay for it, if he's going to pay for it. Once the ball starts rolling, he was in contact the entire time, submitted the paperwork. I mean, maybe it all didn't go as fast as it could have. Maybe there were some balls dropped, but you know, it wasn't one of those where it was kind of that blatant, you know, disdain for the process and feels like he was trying to rectify it the entire time. So I, I, I have heartburn with staff did everything right. I think everybody did everything right. I think the applicant did and, and staff did. So puts us in a tough spot, but 5,000 gives me a little heartburn in this case for this small business owner, um, especially since it was, you know, this is no fault of his own, no negligence of his own. This can't, came about via hurricane, so it's just my thoughts. Commissioner Hartman, you haven't spoken on uh, this item yet. Question, staff, would this sign been infected by the sign ordinance? Yes. yes. Belo so it would have had to come down next year anyway? Yep. In, uh, yes, in 2021. And we gave them a permit to put it back up, knowing it was coming down in two years. They get a permit to repair existing signs, not to replace. Okay. Yeah. Staff knows how much I support them, especially yeah. code enforcement. Yeah. But this one just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And so I think he was trying. I agree with you. I think there was some missed conversations somewhere. Um. But it eventually was coming down anyway, and he brought it down. I, I think he did his due diligence. I could support this one. Okay. Vice Mayor, comment? Uh, the only thing that troubles me is the fact that it took two months to get a permit to take down. <laughs> We're working that, on that. <laughs> <laughs> for whatever reason. Okay. I don't know whose fault it was. We but should. once that was issued on March 5th, I think it was uh, incumbent upon the... Uh, the property owner to take the sign down or repair it. And I think two weeks would be a reasonable time to do that in one way or the other. Uh, there had been months when the sign could have been analyzed and reviewed and inspected. Uh, I'd be willing to forgive a week worth of the fine, but that would be it. Could I answer, sure. uh, I asked, you said about two weeks to have that removed? Yes, when you had a couple months to figure out how you're going to do it uh, when so you had your permit in up. hand on March 5th. That's when we started working. I couldn't work on it before because I couldn't. They said you cannot touch it until you get your permit. The permit was picked up March of 5th. I don't want to uh, argue with yeah, you. Yeah, we're not going to get back. Uh, no, basically, on, what I'm saying is that from March 5th, two weeks should have been sufficient time to take it down when you had plenty of months to, okay. to figure out what you're going to do. So I would be in favor of reducing the fine by $700. Okay. Not a penny more. All right. Commissioner so, Sykes, do you have a comment on this? Do you have a comment? I have none. All right. Did you have something to add? Well, I can just give the reality of the situation, how busy everybody is. I've been waiting for my sign company since the first week of January to do a number of little minor type touch-up stuff. Everybody's so slammed. Getting people to come out is incredibly difficult. Um, and I'm not, you know, let, let me stress something. I don't think, Luigi, that you're not responsible here to some extent. Staff's great. They work hard. We complain all the time to them. The only thing that I like about what I see here is you're actually doing some things over a period of three, four, five months where we so often see people just skirt the responsibility, find ways to move something here, then move it there, move it back. So we're all very frustrated about code enforcement and not being enforced. But as I said, there's a lot that went on here. And I, and I can certainly attest to the fact that getting people to come out and do work is incredibly difficult these days. Everybody's just overworked and swamped. Um, um, I'd be willing to cut this fine in half. Um, I'm certainly interested in knowing where the rest of the commission stands. 
Okay. Um, and I just want to be clear, not to put words in your mouth, but when you say we're frustrated with code enforcement, not what the team is doing it with the with the, 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 policy, the policies, the everything else related to it. I just want to make sure we're... Yes, thank you, Mayor. We as a commission absolutely enforce it, or uh, support code enforcement and, and want to do more of it. Talked about it earlier. So, um, so I, I, you know, this is an amnesty request. I mean, the, the, the notion is, you know, I think he's, he's looking for a, kind of a complete reversal. We've heard one wants to do uh, half, one wants to do 700 hours. Um, I, I would... I would be inclined to, you know, we probably have a little bit of cost in here. So, I mean, I, I was thinking even more extreme than that, again, because this is an extreme circumstance to me. Small, Long-time small business owner, no issues, you know, n no other issues in, in, in town that I, that I know of, at least. Um, and so, you know, I, I could support, I could certainly support half. I would like to do more than that. I would even go further than half, but uh, we'll, we'll see what the motion maker says. All right, do I have a motion on this item? Well, make a motion to approve item B. And the problem is item B doesn't really have a... Staff recommendation is not to approve. He's requesting just a reduction, so I think we have to put some clarity around that. Make motion. a motion to approve the lean, lean amnesty request by the property owner located at 409 Mary Avenue. Okay, and by amnesty, I think that would be 100%. Yes. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. City Clerk, if you'd call the roll, please. Commissioner Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McCurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? No. Vice Mayor Colodi? No. Mayor Owen? Yes. All right. Line uh, fine is reduced. And um, again, thank you to staff for your hard work. I think this was a, an interesting scenario. So. Thank you. Item C. Thank you. Yep. Volusia Sports Academy requesting a fee reduction. David Ray is here with that. All right. Good, uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, Commissioners. Uh, we have the Volusia Sports Academy here um, that is going to be petitioning to lower the, the rental fees um, of the resolution 4019 for the sport complex fees for their seventh and eighth grade uh, uh, travel baseball teams. Um, this is something that hasn't been done before. Um, this is something that uh, um, we haven't done in the past. Staff recommends keeping the current resolution fees, but if you have any questions for myself, we also have Gerald Fuller, the athletic director for the high school, and we have uh, Dan Van Ryder. He is a coach for Volusia Sports Academy and an assistant coach on the high school baseball team. Okay. Thank you, David. We all have the staff report. Um, so with that, I would open it to questions or clarifications needed by the commission uh, just for the sake of time. Any questions for staff or the applicant requester? Is this, Go ahead. Is this for the high school baseball team? <coughs> it's basically a prep team for the high school team. Okay. So seventh and eighth graders, um, we have pretty much uh, three quarters of the team go to New Smyrna Beach Middle or have plans to go to the high school. They might be zoned for, uh, live in Sam Sula, zoned for Creekside, but they have every intention to go to school here. Um, before we started the prep teams, uh, we had a good 15 kids playing out of the area, which tends to drag our kids to other schools. Um, ironically, we're playing... Spruce Creek tonight, and uh, the team's doing well. But um, are you anyway, supposed to be there? <laughs> I'm supposed to be there, but I'm here. All right. Um, so yes, the uh, it's I don't consider it a travel ball team. Um, you know, we have 100% uh, intentions on New Smyrna kids supporting our our, our boys. Um, okay. So we, we don't. Uh, All right. Thank you. Other questions, comments on this item? Yes, yes Commissioner Sachs. Mr. Mayor. Sir, uh, normally the county funds your fees? So there is a, uh, a contract between the county, Volusia, uh, the school district, and the city. Um, we are guests, in a sense, of the school, um, but because we're not high schoolers, right now we're, we're uh, being subject to fees. Um, you know, all the kids are Volusia County kids. Um, 
most of them local to, to New Smyrna Beach. So and we're you. just basically trying to elevate the level of baseball, op offer the opportunity for more competitive baseball at a better price, um, more affordable for parents. Um, just you know, one example, I have five kids on the team right now who have not been able to play competitive baseball because they can't afford it. Um, I bring them in as practice players and work on their development so they will make the high school team or at least get the skills they needed to make the high school team when they get into high school. Thank you. Okay. Any comments or questions on this item? Gentlemen, uh, my, my comments are, while I support everything that's being done here, I, on this one I, um, I, I do support staff's recommendation that we just maintain our current established rates. I think if we need to look at those holistically as we're able to improve operations and try to drive down operational cost, which we're doing some of those things, we got the project later uh, that we're going to talk about. Um, you know, I think this might be something, you know, we certainly want to try to keep those costs as low as possible. Um, I think staff's report is that, that the cost we're passing along, the $41 per player, is, is low for a travel baseball team. I think that's what David says. So, um, Well, right now, as it stands, we're looking at almost $200 a month for each player to pay to play baseball out there. Okay. Yeah, two, 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 David. Two now we're trying to reduce right. that to one. Hang on. Let me. So, David, what you, in the staff report you have forty-one thirty per player per month. What does that mean? Forty-one. Uh, the forty-one and change would be what it would cost per player to rent the fields. And, so we charge. Okay. And the uh, and the the light fee and whatnot per month per per child for the four months. Okay. So once we get those LED lights, we can lower that number. Um, so yeah, unfortunately on this one I have to go with staff's recommendation, but other comments, questions, or do I have a motion on this one? I just want to clarify, you're saying it take, it costs $200 a month for one of your kids to play on this team? Yep. Is yep. this a travel team or a local well, team? Well, you, you have to play in travel ball tournaments in order to compete and at that level. There's no competition playing locally. Uh, it's not like high school where you're playing, you know, Spruce Creek or, yeah. or Seabreeze. So... Um, you have to go away to tournaments to, to play against. Yeah, two hundred dollars is a lot of money a month. Yeah. That's interesting. Uh, you know, my son does soccer, and we don't pay two hundred a month. Um, have you have you looked towards local sponsors for the team? So I also run the the high school, you know, the high school booster club, and we do a lot of uh, fundraising for the high school. Um, we haven't done it for the for the prep teams. This is our first year starting this, um, and we're in a sense hoping to to be in line with the high school and not have to have be subject to the fees of of traditional travel ball teams that come in and use fields and bring kids from all over the county or or um, to use the fields. These are our kids, parents paying local taxes, county taxes. You know, trying to use you know the facilities of the city, so. So at the, uh, at this time, I'm not going to be able to support this, but you can. I want you to feel free to reach out to me um, privately, and let me see if I can help you out, help you fundraise, get some money, put some canisters. I'd like to do something for these kids that can't afford it. Yeah, it's, but it's not cheap. You know, just tournaments alone. Well, you know, you're paying that's a that's what I'm, bucks a tournament. Right, that's what I'm saying. In other words, I, I get that it's very expensive, um, and right now I, I'm not comfortable with taxpayer money on it. However, reach out to me privately, and I'll certainly work with you and see if we can find some some monies for you to be able to do this. Okay, gentlemen, uh, you just wanted to say a sure. word. Um, in support of, of what Volusia Sports Academy and, and Dan and the coaches are trying to do, one of the disadvantages our baseball team is at, at the high school is we are one of the few dist uh, schools in the district that don't have a high school field for our kids to practice and play on. And obviously we have a phenomenal complex uh, you know, that, that we use. Um, this is a model that most of the successful baseball teams use but obviously the advantage that they have is they don't have to rent a facility and they're able to house it at their school with 7th and 8th graders. And then the district uh, facility rental is waived as long as there's insurance in that whole nine. Um, one of the unfortunate things with baseball in particular where it's, where it's gotten is it's priced out 
so many kids from being able to get quality instruction because it's turned into the travel ball model where in order to get great coaching and in order to uh, play against good competition to get them in line to, to be able to be competitive in high school like your like your Spruce Creek program uh, and then have a chance to play in colleges, they've been forced to go into the travel world. And so I know what one of the what all of the coaches are trying to do, they're not getting paid uh, from this, they're, they're donating their time. And the goal was to be able to cut down some of those crazy costs uh, that the parents are unfortunately having to pay uh, to get their kids in a position to be successful high school players. And so uh, if it were something where we had a baseball field at the high school, we would completely house it because we've done it with some other sports where we have facilities. Um, but the reason that that number is so high, obviously some of it comes from the rental of the field and then the rest of it comes from just how much it costs to, to have per se a travel team. But our main goal is to try to get these kids instruction from our high school coaches just sooner. Uh, but we don't have a, a place to do it, obviously. Yeah. Uh, right. Okay. Now. And, and again, on my, on my behalf, I'm going to support everything that you just said. My 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 goal is the way we get there, rather than rather than um, what's proposed here, is that we, unfortunately, difference in the Brandon Center and this is all of these costs are basically very. A lot of them are variable. I mean, it's lighting costs that literally the meters running and other things. And so, if if we do something like this, we're just truly not covering those costs that we are incurring. You know, true hard call incremental hard cost. So my goal is, we, and we've got some initiatives. I mean, literally, we're talking about one next on the agenda to help drive our operating costs lower. And the goal is that we can pass that back into programs like this to make it readily available. Um, I I think the other option is. Hang on. I think the other option is, as Commissioner McGurk has said, I think many of these type of programs. I'm not an expert in it by any stretch, but you you know through sponsors and donors and scholarship type programs for folks that may not have access to the $200 a month or so. Um, you know, I think there's other ways we can, might can help provide some support to, to help offset those costs via, via this great community that we have in, in New Smyrna. So, um, all right, gentlemen, do we have, we got a lot to still get through tonight. So do we have a, we have a my, my proposal was for us to cover the hard cost of the lights and, and the fields, you know, be included in sense. Yeah. So that was the, okay. So we have a motion on this item, and just for clarity, with the staff's kind of open-ended, so let's make a motion in the affirmative that we approve this request, and then we'll vote accordingly on that, if you would, please. We have a motion to approve item 7C. Okay. Not hearing a motion. I think this item dies for lack of a motion, unfortunately. So, um, all right. Appreciate your time being here. Wish you all the luck in the world. Hopefully they win the game tonight. All right, item D, approval of the ECHO grant regarding field turf. David, presentation. The, uh, uh City Commission approved going for the 2020 ECHO grant uh, for field turf at the Sport Complex at the Volusia County Council meeting uh, last Tuesday. It was officially approved, so we were approved for the $400,000. Um, and part of that grant, the city agreed in Resolution 6019 to match it and not to exceed $550,000. Um, part of the grant uh, committee was was one of their willingness to approve us was one of their um, their desire to have this be completed in a timely manner uh, most likely this year one of the one of the aspects that we have going for us is there is a nationally bid agreement um, the national cooperative purchasing agreement which is a nationally bid um, by going through that the NCPA, it would allow the city to get one of the best, if not the best, field turf installer and manufacturer in the country. Someone that is in any NFL stadium you see with field turf is this company. Any college 
90% of the college stadiums you see with, uh, with this type of field is this company, um, the MLS stadiums. They, they not only are one of the top companies, but they're also the pioneer of this industry and this product. Um, they also offer the longest warranty. They come with a 10-year uh, guaranteed warranty. They're number one in safety for, for, um, for uh, uh, field turf. So what we're asking for is the city currently has 240,000 in carry forward from last fiscal year in the general or in the in the general fund to match we would need the remaining 310,000 pulled from the reserves. So what we're, what we're asking and recommending is to pull from the reserves and to go with Field Turf USA Inc utilizing the contract through the NCPA and this would allow the city to um, if we go through this contract as well, and there's um, a number of other municipalities within the state of Florida that have gone off this contract as well to use this uh, um, to put turf in, um, this would allow us to have the field ready and in place for this coming football season. Um, if we if we if we don't if we go out to bid separately, there's no guarantee that we get a, a better product. There's no guarantee. Um, we may get a cheaper price. We may not. You know, it's a, this is a bid on, on a national level. Um, so we're we're recommending and asking um, for approval for the, the the pull from the reserves and then go through the field turf field turf USA Inc. using the NCPA publicly bid contract. Two quick questions for you, and then I open to the commission. Number one is if we went to bid. And let's say that we didn't beat their number. Could we not always go back to this nationally negotiated contract as we a could. fail safe? We, we, we could, but we would be out money up front because we would have to um, we would have to hire for the engineering and the design, and this is all inclusive. They've actually um, the company actually came out when, when this whole process started. Um, over a year ago, the company already has the design ready for us. They're just not going to release it until, you know, until they know whether or not we're going to move forward. And so to do the bid process, we would have to do that we'd engineering to, and yeah, design? Yeah, we'd have to do engineering. I and mean, you don't think other companies might be willing to do that? I mean, we couldn't just bid that holistically as engineering and design services included? We, we can, but the, what's going to end up happening is it's going to push us. The timeline, which the is timeline. my next question. Right. So. If we went that route, then the risk is we miss that kickoff timeline. Um, you mentioned it was kind of the desire of Echo. I didn't listen to the meeting, but it w I mean, what happens if we miss? And I don't know if Nancy. I think Nancy left. Oh no, she's back there. W what happens if we if we miss? I mean, you know, they they were. There have been other projects, not just with New Smyrna, but there have been other projects through Echo. One of their biggest. One of the things that they kept on mentioning this year was there's so many projects that get delayed. There's so many projects yeah. that get pushed back, and you know, all through the county, not yeah. just not just us in particular. And and part of the Echo grant that we put in, we put in a timeline yeah. that you know it would be okay. done within the within the fiscal year, and they were happy with that. Okay, we may not need you. All right, other questions, comments on this item, Commissioner? Go ahead. We're looking at branding or sponsorship for our field anyway is this in any way going to stop that process but i know you and i talked about you could actually put a logo on the field is that something we can go back and do retrofit it yes to do that yes so that wouldn't affect it wouldn't affect it at all okay where is there any discussion on where we get the three hundred ten thousand dollars back to reimburse the general fund any discussion on where are we getting that money Right now, um, in the general fund reserve, you have close to just over six million dollars. That's about twenty percent uh, of your what you're supposed to have. The reason we moved the second item after this one is because there is another funding that is required for the other project. With this one, it's supposed the estimated cost is about nine fifty, and that's design, construction, and hopefully the prep for the field. Um, 400 from Echo that leaves you with 550, and we have 238 thousand dollars from Carry Forward from last year. So you're about 
310, $311,000 that you need to complete the 950. And that will be coming from General Fund Reserve. As he mentioned, the pitch on the ECHO was that he will complete the project before the beginning of the football season. Now, we talked staff, you know, should we bid it out or not? Should we piggyback? Now, if you bid it out, you could do that. But there is no guarantee that you're going to get a lesser price, number one. And number two, it takes some time to get the process going. And then you have to do the design as well. Where this one, they have the design already. And they could, as soon as it's approved, they could move on. And you'll be able to complete it prior to the football season. Okay, I understand that. My question was, wh where are we reimbursing the general fund from? Uh, maybe I... I, I it's the 310000 coming from the general fund reserve. Yes. So if he gets any um, sponsorship or anybody wants to put a banner, whatever, then that money could go back to the... But right now, there is nothing to okay. go back and... Okay, so there's, that was my question. There's no plan. And we don't have a plan in place necessarily. We've talked about sponsors, but we don't have a plan in place for it. We, are, uh, we have a banner sponsorship program through the, the sport complex. Um, we are, I'm, I'm actually right now putting some specs together to go out to RFP based on the, uh, uh, the program that you all approved um, at the last meeting. Yeah. And, and so we are going to be moving forward with that for naming rights and, and sponsorship of fields and things of that nature, trying to pull in a little bit bigger, bigger companies to try and, you know, brand the field itself. Okay. Thank you. If I may, we, we also will have hard call savings that, in theory, when we build next year's budget for the sports complex, we can pull out that can go straight back to the bottom line to help reimburse. I mean, there, there are real savings from this. Well, what's the ballpark that? What, what do we what, give me some idea? We would probably be looking at a thirty to fifty thousand dollars savings off of the sport complex budget annually. 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 From water pesticides, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, paint to paint the fields because this would come with um, soccer and football markings already. Um, the our true green contract for for chemicals and maintenance and things of that nature, sodding because we would save wear and tear on other fields by moving practices over to that game field or to the stadium and, field. And one last question about this material. You and I have spoke. There is a tremendous concern about the cancer effect of some of this um where's where are you at what's your, what's your knowledge on that so some of the cancer risk that that, that had, has come has come from third-party companies and that's one of the one of the top reasons why i want to go with field turf inc as well is their product is made 100 percent solely here in the u.s all their infill is from the US other other companies have their infill comes from out of the country so they have no essential oversight of what is in that infill is, everything from start to finish is is done here within the US is this gonna be at one point we talked about a cork material as opposed to a rubber material what is the material we're gonna use on this well the, the, the there's going to be a rubber material in there It'll have a, uh, a cool play aspect, which is an add-in to it, which will, which will keep the, the, during the hottest part of the day, you know, essentially if it's 100 degrees, just to use round figures, if it's 100 degrees outside, it's going to be generally, with regular infill, it's going to be about a 112 or so to 115 on the field. With the cool play or sand mixture within, it drops at about 8 to, eight to 9 degrees. So instead of it being 112 to 115, it would be, you know, 103 to 106. Is this the same? You say this is the highest quality material. Is this what the NFL and the top college programs are playing on exactly? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> Question, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> David, it was a 20-year warranty on the product? It's, it's a 10-year it's a warranty. Ten it's year. the longest in the industry. The American manufacturer, did they speak to cancer risks? They don't, they don't, um, the, the, the correlation to cancer risk was some time ago. And, and again, that was more so with the infill that was, that was being used by third party companies. 
essentially. That, that is an underlayment? Yeah, so, that? so essentially the, the infill acts as the, the, the dirt, so to speak, mm -hmm. to keep the fibers up. And it also adds the cushion to the, to the field. Thanks. Vice Mayor, any comments? A question. Question. Let me get back here. Tour attorney. No more. We can award a contract like this without competitive bidding? If we approve that. Yes, so he's got um, a, I forget the initials, but he's piggybacking off a contract that has gone through the competitive process, which is permitted in our purchasing policy. Have so if you find another contract that has gone through the competitive um, bidding requirements, we can piggyback off that. We've done it multiple times throughout the year. I know we've done it through other government agencies, but this isn't really a government agency. It, but it's, it's okay. It's a cooperative purchasing agreement, yes. All right. I, so, go ahead. I'm not fond of the idea of this type of purchasing because I think competitive bidding is the way we should go uh, in general. I do see the pluses with it. I'm sure it's a good project. Uh, I don't like the expense, but then again, we approved that expense uh, in principle grant. when yeah. we went to apply for the grant. So we're going to be taking $300,000 of available money out of our our budget next year so there's gonna have to be a price to pay for that and I'm sure that's gonna come out of uh, recreation type of uh, projects next year because I won't approve anything that uh, doesn't take into account this three hundred thousand uh, dollar expenditure yeah so that's a, I mean, that's a debate we can have. I mean, in theory, this isn't coming out of that budget. I think what you're saying is you would want to see it fully kind of taken out of that budget to be replenished in the, in the general fund. Well, uh, it replaced in the general fund simply by not expending it on something else. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, I mean, we, again, we can have that debate when we get there. My fault would be, uh, Bill, you've done planning your whole life. I've done budgets my whole life. I'll tell you the one thing on projects like this is, People like David, and he's, he's a good guy, but people like David stand up and they talk about all the cost savings. We put the project in, forget to go back and pull that money out of those budgets that actually gets back in the, in the reserves, and somehow those budgets just kind of always linger there. So, And, and that's what I'm going to... That's the... I want to see us and our budget yep. replenish those reserves. I yeah. think those reserves are important. And we need to keep them at... We need to get back I, up to 25%. That would be... Yeah, so that would be my direction to staff would be I, we I don't think we get it back on one year that was never the plan as we get it all back in one year but it is the plan that we go in we take those hard costs to the extent we can out of that budget and they become bottom line funds that can help refinish this and really be setting aside for in 10 years we're gonna have about what is a hundred something K in today's dollars to, to redo this so we need to also make sure we're prepping for that so all right we're not going to solve next year's budget, though, in this one item, so let's move on. Um, gentlemen, do we have a motion on this item? Item C. Move to approve. Second motion. City Clerk, call the roll, please. Vice Mayor Clody? Yes. Commissioner Herman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Thank you. All right, item E, which is, or sorry, not really item E, item H from the consent agenda which is the Buena, just so we're all talking the same thing. Yep. Um, <laughs> which is the Buena Vista, the fine grant application for full replacement of the long fishing pier at Buena Vista Park. That is the item we were talking about. On uh, February 19th meeting, um, the commission was uh, presented by staff um, three fishing piers that needed some, uh, some repair. Uh, Rocco Park, um, Spyglass Fishing Pier and also Buena Vista. The Spyglass and uh, Rocco Park were damaged by hurricanes of 2016 and 17. At the commission discussion, uh, the commission directed staff to demolish the Rocco Park and uh, Spyglass and spend the money on uh, Buena Vista. After the inspection by uh, the, uh, our marine consultant, it appears that the uh, fishing pier needed really a lot more work than what anticipated. 
So it could be uh, a full replacement. That is at a cost of $625,000. Now, there is a, a, a fine grant opportunity available. Uh, so when I discussed this with maintenance operation director, I said, let's take it to the commission first because the grant application is due at the end of uh, March. Uh, so 625, that's about $312,500. Uh, the reason we moved it is because of the impact on the general fund reserve. So if you have 300,000 for uh, the field turf and the 300 for this one, that's about 600,000 and change out of the general fund reserve. That brings you down to close to about 17.9% in terms of the general fund reserve. You don't have to have the money now because obviously you submit the grant and this is for the next fiscal year that we could budget for. Uh, there is no other funds that we could use. Uh, I know, um, uh, you know, we looked at the parking funds. Parking funds, we could not use it for that specific park because we do not we do not charge for the parking. Uh, so the only funds available right now is your fines and the general fund reserve. So okay. with that, I'll uh, be more than happy to answer the questions you might have. So the question before us, just so there's clarity, is do we want to go for the fine grant, acknowledging that if it's approved, it could result in a matching um, obligation on our part of up to 300, and let's just call it 15,000, dollars of which we really don't have a source for right now which is what we just dealt with on the previous project questions comments for staff or of staff or to the commission jump in go ahead well i think the importance of <clears throat> how bad is the pier we need to get moving on this right and the well, we can't miss out on the grant money yeah. so you know one of the problems is if we want to have this place packed full of people really upset with us you know, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is how it gets hard. Because we just approved the new football field, and we have a, a dock that is very heavily used and very popular and needs to be replaced. So you get to just tell the people we don't have the money for it. They're not going to understand that. So I'd say we have to go forward with this, and we're going to have to sharpen our pencils. Um... During budget time, we're going to have to come up with roughly $600,000 put back in a general fund. And I think that's going to be very, very difficult. We all know the challenges during the budget time. Uh, costs keep going up, and um, and most of the time we don't want to take anywhere close to what the increase ad valorem tax revenue is. Uh, and we'd like to cut some of that. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to have a very difficult budget, but I can't. I, I, there's no way that I can justify not supporting the Buena Vista Park, and I think that that dock takes precedent over Rocco Park, which I've been contacted by people in, in, in my district, very interested in wanting Rocco rebuilt, and I've told them, you know, it's a challenge, it's not money, and that's also the, spy, the spyglass dock. So we can't do all this stuff, but this is probably by far and away the most heavily used dock and I support having to, uh, yes. to move forward with it. Other comments, quickly? Vice Mayor. Uh, to our manager. So, Do we plan to close that pier soon? Buena Vista? Yes. Um, not at this point. I mean, it's it needed some repair. I have not got the word that it's it's up to the point where it needed to be closed down. I have not seen it myself, to be honest with you. Uh, but this is relying on the inspection that was done by the consultants and our staff. But I, I'm not sure if if uh, Kyle is here. Have you actually looked at the fear? No. Okay. I I I. I don't want to tell you that it's, but I have not heard that it needs to be cl closed down today. Okay. Um, I've been on the pier. I don't see the dire need to uh, go to a fined grant, which we are have expressed concerns because they tie us down forever. So uh, with the expenditures we have incurred in our next budget, I just can't see approving this at this time. Maybe next year, 
We can take a look at it again. But it's just too much money to, to lower down. We make a big point of wanting to have 25% in reserve. And we've already taken a chunk out of that. And I can't support taking another chunk out of it. Uh, that's my feelings on it. OK. Um, if, if, yep. No, just real quick. On the fine grant, when is that deadline? It's uh, the, just before the end of March. I think March 20, whatever, March 29th. So we'll have one more meeting, but we probably won't have time. Yeah. Well, the reason yeah. we brought it now is just because the yeah. application needs to be prepared. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. We have asked the okay. consultant to work on the application just in case. Okay. But if, you, if the commission approves it, then we'll bring you back at the next meeting, yeah. the application and... Uh, Great. Right. I guess my questions are in line with Vice Mayor's is, you know, how long could we nurse the, I mean, is it, is it critical? Can it, can it make it another year? Are we putting people in danger? Like, what kind of... Um, I don't think that we could wait for a year based on what I've heard, but I, uh, I again, I didn't have the time to go look at it myself. Yeah, so, and I, uh, I, I didn't either. I should have, and I, I didn't, so, um, yeah. Sorry, you had comments. Go ahead. That was my question. Can it wait a year? Is this beer safe? enough to wait a year and so we don't know but uh, it's a quality of life issue and we already discussed it are we going to back out of this well this one we haven't I mean this one we haven't committed what we're committing to now is what we would then not want to back out of if they do approve the fine grant we wouldn't want to back out so this is we're basically committing now that if they approve it, we're going to find the 300 and something thousand. Um, and what I think city managers are cautioned to someone is if we just go to reserves for that, we're going to dip below uh, the thresholds. I'm going to come back to you. I want to get Hartman on this before. So it's due at the end of March, but when do they actually meet? And um, <clears throat> normally you submit on uh, the end of March. Um, they come back to you uh, sometime in June. You make a presentation before the fine board. And then probably in October, November, you will hear that you got approved or not. And then you get your contract to be approved. So by December, January of 2021, you will have a, a, a grant agreement that you could actually proceed. So. so if we didn't go this this year, we're looking probably at 18 months before we could actually replace it. If we wait, if you if you don't, you go actually you go a year to apply, and then yep. you know it takes so okay. it takes probably, as you said, eighteen All months. Right. All right, you had last comment. No, just comment. There are two fishing piers on Buena Vista, so we won't be without one. Where's the second one? I'm not. Too there's familiar. there's two piers there. To the south, correct? Yes. Both heavily used, I'll admit, I'll say that. I this one in particular, connected. this one and the one at Riverside Park under the bridge yeah. are the most heavily That's used sure. fishing pier. And I mean, if the commission wishes, uh, we'll, we'll look at the pier um, sometime this week, and we'll come back to you at the next meeting, give you a report, and if, that, if we feel the pier cannot take a year, then we report back to you both ways. And if, if you want to change your mind to submit the application, at least we got some time. So we have two weeks to decide? And no, I will come back on the 24th. We'll have the application ready in case if you want to, and then we'll get your report. I'm comfortable with that. I'd like yeah, that. I'd like to just know, you know, what, it, well, you know, what kind of cost would it be to just nurse it along? Like, could we do some temporary measures? And we, um, we owe you that. So yeah, I, those I apologize that we're not. No, that's all right. We, but yeah, that that's I think that'd be helpful, and then hopefully we can still get the application processed in time if we if we uh, have that. So we're going to continue that item until next agenda. There are no second readings of public hearings, first time ever, I believe. Nine A, if you would, City Attorney, read the ordinance by title only.
Ordinance number 2120, an ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach amending the Code of Ordinances, revising Chapter 2, Administration, Article 2, City Commission, Section 2-53, to increase notice required for special meetings, providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Okay. Item B. You know, I really should have clarified early on. I keep forgetting that if folks are here for the first reading items, they, they shouldn't stay the whole meeting. <laughs> Can be sorely disappointed by the lack of discussion. All right, the second reading and public hearing on that item will be on March 24th, 2020. Item B, City Attorney. An ordinance, ordinance number 2220, an ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach vacating a public access easement on private property located on Claremont Street and Fremont Street, providing for conflicting ordinances and providing an effective date. Okay, the, the second reading of public hearing on that item will be March 24th, 2020. Last item, C, City Attorney. Ordinance number 2320, an ordinance of the City of New Smyrna Beach amending the Code of Ordinances, Chapter 18, Animals, establishing Section 18.316, Restraint of Animals While Off Property of Owner, amending Section 18.334, Mandatory Spay and Neuter of Dogs and Cats, providing for public hearing, providing for conflicting ordinances, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Do have one comment. Um, I may need direction if if I have two different ordinance sections in here. If you all would like me to separate them, I can do that. But I would need direction tonight to do that. Okay. Bef before we do that, ma'am, I'm guessing you have a comment on this item, on yes. the the public. All right. So I'll I'll tell you that uh, that would have been during public comments. But seeing as how you've been here this whole time, if the commission's okay with it, I'd like to allow her to go ahead and speak at this time. I'm sorry. I'm no, no, that's. Mr. Mayor, I, I apologize to the fine lady. That's okay. I didn't realize it's just this first was reading. the first reading. If Sorry. we could suspend the rules and allow her to yeah, speak. Absolutely. If you would like to speak at this time, please go right ahead. Can I just say yes. what I need to say? Sure. I own the property. My name is Rosemary Williams, and I own the property <coughs> on the northwest adjacent to this property the my property is on the northwest um, half of his item B okay easement back in 2001 he petitioned the city to vacate Fremont Street which they did and because he owned the, uh, the property on both sides of Fremont and he wanted to be able to use the street as part of his property. So they vacated the street and in exchange he gave this easement. Well, everybody that comes down Fremont Street sees it's a dead end, swings around and comes through my driveway to get back onto Turnbull Bay Road, which is annoying and it's hard on my driveway but uh, maybe if you could put a dead end sign down at the edge of uh, Turnbull Bay Road so people would know they're not it's not a street anymore uh, that that's one of my problems uh, but he says that people are driving through that easement. I, I wasn't aware that people were driving on the, on the weeds, but apparently they are. My concern is that I don't want him to now close that easement and people, more people will be coming through my property to get back onto Trumbull Bay Road. I feel like if you get rid of that easement, it might affect the value of my property and uh, access to the south side of my property. I have a five foot easement or five foot uh, setback and that should probably be enough for a roofer to put a dumpster to, if they have to scrape the you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, Mr. Siegel is a very nice neighbor. We've never, I've been there 42 years, and he, he has been a good neighbor. But who knows what next week's going to bring. And so I'd rather you don't 
abandon that easement, please keep it there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mayor, so this was brought to my attention yesterday. Um, I went out to the site, looked at it. Um, I'll, I'm going to let you know that I think that we should table this and postpone this because I think that at least I certainly need more time to understand the issue. But when I go out to the site and look at it, when we vacate an easement or a right of way, there's usually no harm done. That is that is not what I think that I'm seeing here. There is multiple businesses that are going to be affected by this, and it's going to be it's just not consistent with when we usually vacate an easement or or and I think that we all should take a look at this. And I certainly need more time. I'm uncomfortable with moving this forward because I think this is a potential has the potential to be a, a big problem if we vacate. Okay. So I have a question for city attorney, but I was, uh, she's... So do we need to... What do we need to do, Carrie? Um, if we well, so to do the that, we'll news journal ads, are they work against us, so we have to actually submit the ad prior to having first reading. Um, could we keep it on for now and gather more information since we've already... Um, I would can. like her address again. Uh, so I was, I yeah, I'm, I'm going to make sure we get get that. Hey, Kelly, if you can make sure you, we get her address, and then is, this is your zone, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm sure Commissioner McGurk would would connect with her as well. So Kelly, we'll get her information. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have this at the scheduled time, March 24th, 2020. If at that time we would like to continue it to a date certain, we can do that. If we still need more information, perfect. I think Thank that. you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, all right, did we make it through all of them? We got through um, item C, well, we did, right? We oh, we needed, we needed more. Th yeah, that's this. right. So item C, gentlemen, the city attorney's question to us was uh, kind of two different components to that. Did we want to break that up? I'm assuming one of you probably mm -hmm. said something to her, so if that person would like to speak now. <laughs> yeah, you? These are one of these <laughs> things that we deal with from time to time where there are multiple issues in the same ordinance. And... Uh, you know, it's not saying one way or the other, but, you know, you're tied to two different items, two separate items on the same ordinance. So I would prefer that they be separate. I know that causes more angst for you and staff. It's totally okay. It's hard, hard for me to sometimes predict. <laughs> no. Um, but I, so well, I, we're going to go. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm happy to separate them. Okay. So I'll come back on first reading next time with two different ordinances that will cover this. So let me just make sure I got consensus on that. Everybody okay with them being separated? I mean, getting in the same ends, but if there's parts that are more contentious than others, I'm okay either way, but so I'm okay with separating. Commissioner, do you mean like chickens and tethering? No, I'm talking about tethering and neutering. Same okay. thing, right? We, we shouldn't be seeing, we should be voting on separately. Yeah. All right. So I think we're we're all in agreement on separating. All right. Good deal. Um, boards and commissions, we have none. Mayor and commission reports. Before we go in there, I did want to revisit the item that Carrie had brought to us earlier and just resolve that little order of business. Um, basically, she brought a precautionary uh, measure of allowing for remote attendance, which uh, would allow us to still conduct business if a couple of us needed to self-quarantine. Um, just for the record, I didn't bring that to her. That wasn't, I know I'm always pushing for remote attendance. I didn't actually bring this one up. Um, she had the foresight to think, well, hey, what if nobody can attend? <laughs> what if nobody can, wants to be in the room with each other? So um, I support it. I have no issues with it. Any, any concerns or heartburn, it would terminate automatically once the state of emergency is lifted. And certainly, I don't think any of us would abuse it. I'm going to be here if I can be here, but I don't want to get everybody sick either. So any concerns with that or to have a motion to accept? Move to approve. Second. City Attorney, if you would call the roll on that. Uh, Vice Mayor Hartman? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Vice Mayor Hartman? Yes. And Mayor... <laughs> One. Yes. Okay, sorry about Did that. I called them both vice mayors. Yes, okay. he said a yes. All right. So sorry about that. Five, five vote, two vice mayors voted. <laughs> 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 uh, 
All right, Mayor and Commission reports will begin with the Vice Mayor. When we were having our discussions on the uh, uh, formula business thing, uh, I, uh, I kind of focused on our historic district ordinances and what we have in our comprehensive plan and our, our land development standards. And uh, I find them to be a mess. Uh, I would like to uh, have staff take a, a look at recommending changes. Uh, one instance that uh, uh, came to mind was when we approved the demolition of a home uh, down the end of, I believe it was a Sire Street along the river right mm -hmm. behind uh, Flagler. Uh, my concern at the time was that there's going to be some vacant lots in there and our ordinance doesn't really uh, clarify how we should deal with that and how much they would have to be in compliance. So uh, I would like uh, the uh, staff to take a look at that, recommend changes to the historic ordinance to uh, make it more clear, to get the uh, components of it in the right ordinance, whether it's the comprehensive plan or the land development plan. It's kind of backwards now, so I, I would like the staff or commission to authorize them to move forward with that. No issues with that. Uh, I, I'm only confused at how the formula restaurant plays into that. You just that's the last time we talked about it. Oh, okay. That's what uh, about I, I pulled up because I said on the form. Okay. I don't want to go into it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Basically, I started there. I ended that's up with historic to see how it would affect that, <laughs> and sure. then I just wandered away. And that's where the train left the station. <laughs> yes, it did. <laughs> Any concerns with having said so? This it. is the same plan that we've already submitted to the state that we approved last meeting. Depends if we make yes, if we make comp plan changes or land development regulation changes on it. I think the land development regulations do need a clean up overall, not just the, for this issue. So that's uh, good timing. Uh, comp plan, we can bring back any changes that come out of that. We can delay that and and bring back any changes with that final reading. Okay. Okay. I heard at least three folks are okay with that. So. Thank you. Uh, second item is the implementation of the loaning unloading zones on the Flagler Avenue District. Uh, we had a presentation. Uh, we've had the public kind of input saying they like it. We haven't had much of a, uh, a uh, chorus of complaints from the business people. I would like to have the staff authorized to prepare a resolution to implement the installation of those plans. I won't go into the fact that we've been working on this for 11 years, but it's time to do something for the people who live out there. This is the first step. I'll have other things coming in the future, but I would like to do this now. It's relatively low in costs for the actual implementation. Let the staff come back with recommendations as to what the time periods would be, uh, those details. Uh, I had uh, walked the street with the chief. We found about eight locations that are about 60 feet long, would handle most of the vehicles. Uh, one of the complaints I heard was there's not enough on one side of the street. It would be nice to have more on the other side of the street, but the situation doesn't warrant it. And if they're making deliveries at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m., hopefully there won't be too much traffic. Uh, also, the tractor trailer that now parks in the middle of the uh, North Causeway as you come off the bridge and has taken his uh, his wares to either side has managed to survive so I think it's a good plan I think the neighbors deserve it uh, they can also look into the uh, the truck route at the same time but we really got to put something on the ground okay I support it. I don't want to piecemeal this, but I also want to get things done. And so that one, I mean, I heard a lot of support from it. So we can start with that and move on to others. So I support it. Um, I mean, we don't have a motion here, but do we have three or four others that support giving staff that direction? Or do we want to formalize it? Or how do you want to do it? I would, uh, I, sorry, <laughs> I, I would like to see us uh, come back with that uh, in a month or okay. three meetings at the most. All right. It's a list of recommendations. 
or a list of to adopt proposed implementation yeah the, an implementation plan i think that we would be at that point making a motion on to adopt but we don't want to have staff do all the work if we're if you know there's no i support it but i th i think we just need to keep in mind that there needs to be a a um grace period on the enforcement part of it um you know to get the word out to the trucking companies yeah. and okay I have, I have no problem with that because okay. businesses will also have to alter their delivery schedules. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, but that would be all part of so the we'll recommendation. We'll glide path, yeah. Uh, coming forth. Well, all right. the business community has chose not to engage. <laughs> I think they will now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we might see them here. I heard at least three or four folks that support it, so I think staff has the support needed to go and put a we'll, plan together. We'll draw a plan and we'll come back to you with it. So this way we could all agree on the locations and how we're going to do it. So. Okay. Correct. And if we need any other changes to our enforcement ordinances, I would like to see them done at the same time. So the police will have the ability to enforce parking within those things and not out in the streets. Okay. Thank you. That's it. That's it. Mr. Sachs. Well, I'd like to keep you gentlemen here for another hour, but I just have a few very important <laughs> topics, very important topics. Uh, as we sit here, there's a seawall underneath the South Causeway that's in dangerous disrepair. And as we sit here, supposedly the city is fighting, arguing, litigating with FDOT to repair it. There are holes behind it. Children could fall in it. You'd never know they were gone. And um, it's been in disrepair since I can remember. So I, I think if, if it were me, I would make an emergency motion to find the monies to repair this and then charge FDOT or take them to court because that's not yeah it's, well uh, well I don't know we will see FDOT you, know, you can laugh but go look go look at uh, the seawall gentlemen just just yeah. do me a favor go look at the seawall and you know it's our city so and it's right next to our premier playground are, are there low cost things like just back I mean are we within scope of I mean a load of dirt's a couple hundred bucks I'll pay it on my own pocket can we just go backfill it and to fill the hole in or is they that have been backfilling it the problem is it it's within out. the DOT right away okay. so it be, brings another liability on us if something happened okay um, I have discussed it with I think this is the second or the third DOT secretary and every one of them will say you know we're going to look at it and come back to you their attorney is very um, stubborn about that it is our responsibility even though it is ours as in ours is the city, the city. Because we lease the area under the bridge, and in the lease it says we are responsible for any facilities. Well, that was put in because of the restroom. So my argument with them was your pier for the bridge is within the area. Yeah. Are we responsible for the piers? We're not. So, so the last time we met, uh, I think Brian and I, and uh, who else was with us? Chris. And Chris Ryan. We met with them. We argued for about an hour, and he was supposed to come back with us. And, and he so, so the argument right now with FDOT is whose responsibility is it? It says that we are responsible for the repair because we lease the area. Okay. So we we'll are keep going back and forth on that. Ultimately, if it lands as our responsibility, what kind of a... I mean, it's a seawall, a couple feet, a couple hundred feet. What are we talking? How big job? It's a, it's a good chunk, and it's it's a, it's expensive. It's not it's not cheap. So, so my suggestion would be, without spending a ton of time, staff time, if commission supports it, would be, um, I think, giving us a number so that we're talking in quantifiable terms here, so that we can talk about the scope of the problem, and then uh, we'll see if we can support Commissioner Saxon that we invest that as a city, or if it's worth it because the number's so and large I, that we continue to go back and forth with whoever the next leader I, at FDOT is. That, and I will send him another email, hopefully, to, he's an interim. Yeah. So hopefully I think that's part of the struggle is as well, because we got other st stuff as well with FDOT, and part of the problem is they keep, re it's a revolving door leadership there, so it's hard to get traction on stuff. So that's not, that's not our team's fault. But, and, um, and I don't think suing them is a great, I uh, think that I, would kind of end the relationship at that point. I can, well, I can, I'm not sure we have any real case, but the, 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 <laughs> I want to echo what you just said. FDOT has been a revolving door across the board. Our district secretary, you know, it's constantly changing. So um, 
keep developing a rapport and some kind of relationship and commitments is, is, is impossible right now. No one's doing anything because there's so much movement. I agree. But lives are at stake. So anyway, gentlemen, I'll, I'll yeah. be later. And I think if we could come up with even some temper, like, can we just flag it off? I mean, we do, I do we, we need to do some emergency things? Off, and, but, but I'll yeah. get you right. something. Well, yeah, my, my request okay. would be that um, you also include the cost of temporary repairs because I think we should do them. Yeah. But we should know how much first. Yep. All right. Other and, items? And uh, do we have a report or can I, or do I have to make a motion? Uh, we had discussed baffle boxes and especially baffle boxes at this point to keep our river clean. Wherever we can apply them, whether they be private projects or city projects, we need to implement that end product. Um, that'd be so something where we, could, are we? we could budget that for, for next year out of storm water, um, and then we could look at appropriate locations to maximize their benefit, um, but I'd recommend putting that in as a budget item. Does applying those make it a Class 2 stormwater outfall? We already have Class 2 standards, so this would be above and beyond for new development, so we'd be looking at going to retrofitting probably the older developments first. And one more question, gentlemen. I had given the petition for Live Oak to staff. Uh, it was not presented by staff tonight. I don't know if my colleagues did not get or did get a copy of it. That, that was part of the presentation on Live Oak. Um, and we also had speed tubes set out there. I was hoping that staff would be ready, but uh, I was disappointed. Not going to point and fingers. If you, if you gave it to me, uh, Commissioner, I... Don't remember if I find it I will make an, a public apology at the next meeting I honestly yeah. I think thanks Colin uh, gentlemen just you know keep in mind we got to keep our residents safe yeah and, and to that I would say and I held this comment earlier but I, I'd say you know look I mean first of all everybody on the stage is human staff is doing a, a you know a, a yeoman's work many times you know Kelly's filling in for a vacancy right now so um, you know I don't, I don't want to we're, we're all partners up here um, you know I'd say the, the 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 agenda has been published since Wednesday so I think it's you know on items that I'm trying to push through I can tell you staff knows I shepherd those items through and I make sure and I review the agenda and make sure it's there so I think I think we can all partner up on that and make sure if we see something missing you know we're ahead of that before right here uh, right here in the meeting and um, but certainly if a ball was dropped you know look I've, I've done it many times no. it, it happens so no harm no foul uh, just to be sure that we have that live oak uh, return on our next agenda yep thank you and we'll get all the, I'm sure we'll get all the petitions and everything uh, actually I think your wife sent them out while you were talking so Commissioner McGurk thank you um, can't keep it short. You know, League of Cities <clears throat> uh, board meeting today. Heads up, F dot is and uh, the, while they're doing while they're in session, they're looking at cutting their budget. They're anticipating a significant amount of lost revenue from the coronavirus. So they're um, so they're automatically looking at in Jake. Ironically, what did come up as an example, crosswalks those kinds of things so you're not so it's very unlikely that you're going to get commitments or allocations for a number of things anticipating the loss of revenue from tourism so we'll have to see how it shakes out but heads up this coronavirus thing is going to have all kinds of reaching implications for a while thank you mayor commissioner Harmon. so i have a couple of items um where are we on our strategic plan? Um, we have some, uh, some of you wanted to uh, discuss it at just before we start discussing the budgets. We were planning on actually bringing it to you uh, at the end of February. Uh, right now, we're actually the staff is, we took the stuff from the consultants and we want to kind of give it uh, an action with each item that he presented. And if you, the commission wants us to bring it back to you, um, either in two meetings, we'll bring it back to you. The direction that I gave staff is that we will have it ready by the end of this month. And then this way we could discuss with you if you wanted to bring it at the first meeting in April or after. But it will be ready the first meeting of April, if you wish. 
Yes, I'd rather have it sooner than later. I mean, it was done in December, so. I agree. I think that's things that we need to think about and talk about probably even before the budget process. I agree. Um, who actually owns the part of Flagler between Buenos Aires and the beach? Between Buenos Aires and the beach? Yeah. The county. Okay. They didn't own it, but they maintain it. So is there any way we can force them to make that a double entry lane between 7 a.m. and 11? You know, we, uh, Commissioner, we just had a, our annual meeting with uh, Beach Patrol, Volusia County, DOT. They were supposed to be there. They were not. The police chief, Brian, and I. We usually have this annual meeting every year before the season starts. And one of the questions I ask him about the devil, and they have the devil uh, in the weekend. Um, I think it's from... What time to what time, uh, Chief, that they got it? But normally they got it from, I think, when they open up until sometimes 11, 12, they have double coming in. And they have Crawford for um, anybody who have beach passes. So we're trying to, we were trying to work with them to inform traffic, even out there at... Um, I-4 and 44 right. with these electronic signs if the beaches are closed to actually have the electronic signs indicate that it's closed. And then also the chief is purchasing some additional signs, beach patrol purchasing additional signs to put them on uh, North Causeway and the South Causeway. Okay. Um, all right. So we had a petition sent before us today for a stop sign on Pine and due east. There's a petition signed by all the residents. There's a speed study associated with it. That's um, consistent with what we've done in the past. So I'd like to make a motion that we put a stop sign at due east and Pine Street. Okay, I have a motion to have a second. Second. Discussion. Uh, I'll go ahead and I'll let you lead off. As much as I like the idea of putting it there, I really think that we got to have a staff recommendation on it, just like we have on all the rest of them, in that direction we're going. So, yep. You, go, you go ahead? I'm, I'm itching to. <laughs> so, I, you know, this is what the... This feels like the hundredth stop sign we've talked about tonight. I'm losing track of where they all are. This this technical term here, willy nilly approach to this, is is going to bite us, gentlemen. I mean, that's the reality. And so, um, we're 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 where we are. But we've got to find a way to back away out of this and get some kind of a consistent process around this. It can't be that we're having during public participation we're approving stop signs, during mayor and commission reports we're approving. I mean, you know, who want, you want a stop sign? You want a stop sign? Everybody gets a stop sign. This is the Oprah show, right? So we've we got to come up with something to where it comes to us via they've worked with staff, they've made sure they've met all the requirements that we've outlined clearly. You know, we had a manual, I think, that addressed all of this. There's got to be a process, or else this is going to become a, a headache we deal with at every single meeting with people showing up and saying, hey, I got, I've got the petitions. I did the same thing X group did. Where's my stop sign? I want it tomorrow. And I'm not saying we have to start with this one. I'm just saying we got to start somewhere. So that's my comments on that. Staff is the one who recommended putting their crosswalk at Dew East and Pine. It goes from one side of the street to the other. So you have a pedestrian crosswalk with no stop signs. It's kind of like the same thing that we tried to do on Magnolia, but we got a lot of I mean, we, we got didn't pedestrians work. So on A one A, we got pedestrian crossings well, and no stop signs. So. You know we. Um, you know, uh, made a motion. Mayor, That's right. And you got a second. Some time ago, they they used to just install stop signs as we do it now. Then after that, we start following the procedure, which means we do the study. If the study says it's not warranted, then they don't put it in. So it makes it difficult because the staff is frustrated. They're saying, why aren't we doing the studies if you're going to install whatever, the stop sign, whatever. So, yeah. And I have no... And I'm saying even if we want to do it the less scientific way, I'll say, 
I'm just saying let's just get it on the agenda and let's make sure it comes at the right time and again it's not just during public participation and during public hearing and then during main commission count we've now talked about stop signs at three different points in this meeting I think at least two so I'm just saying we just gotta we gotta you know well, I, with, with commissioner uh, uh, Commissioner Sachs, I mean, he says that he gave me the, uh, the petition, so, and I don't doubt that he gave it to me. Um, so, but he had it. He yeah, that's not the point. Uh, the, the point is just that it's, it's now come up two different times. So anyway, I just would like to see us develop some consistency to how we do these. Gentlemen? So yes. May I make a comment? We, we already understand that staff sometimes, m many times, recommends no action. Uh, they don't support stop signs, and we approve them. We see a need. The people plead with us. It does not really happen that often. But our city, again, is besieged with traffic and problems. Uh, I'm surprised that Commissioner Hartman brings it up now. It seems like he has supporting documents. I would gladly support him at the next meeting. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> to be to be fair, uh, you know, because if he see if he sees the need, and uh, Commissioner, did you say that staff did or did not support it? There was a speed was a study, study done, but there was no staff recommendation with the speed study. And so, uh, you know, this we're gonna the staff, it anyway. if we can, if if we go through all those steps, and even if you guys come back with a report saying no, we don't recommend it at this time, then we can follow through and, and get and get done. Uh, I know it's not justified in the manuals all the time, but we have no other alternatives. Right. So, right. so if I may, that, that's a that's a different debate. That that's a whole that's for us to debate. Right. Is are we going to overrule? Right. All I'm talking about is a series of process here. I'm just forget that. I'm talking about a process. When should we be talking about this? Should it come up in mayor and commission reports? Should it be that, you know, Commissioner Hartman has done all the legwork and then he's got to somehow make sure we all get that? Should it be, you know, that he, I mean, my rather would be this, gentlemen. Here's, if I tell you how I think it could work, it's, I think this is how we do most other items, is if I want to see something on an agenda that we're going to talk about that I want us to all support, I try to bring it up during mayor and commission reports. I try to mention it and say, do I have the, the support of at least three of my fellow commissioners to have staff add this to the next agenda? And then I work with staff, make sure they have all the stuff they need to support the case. And that's, why, that's why we're talking about formula businesses. That's exactly how I did it. I brought it up during mayor and commission reports and said, I would like to add this to an agenda for us to discuss. So if I think if we follow that process, we get away from you know making motions during public participation or main commission comments, and 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 passing papers back and forth. I just I think we could get away from that, have it on the agenda, bring it up during main commission comments, ask staff to add it to the next agenda, make sure all the documentation is there. We discuss it at that time. That's what I would like to see happen. But this is our meeting, not my meeting. But I'm just saying I think that would allow us to at least have some process around that. I agree completely. I, I would like to see whatever background data is. I want it on our thousand-page agenda. That's uh, that's right. I'll withdraw my motion then, and make a motion that it bring it back to us at the next meeting. Okay. I will draw my second and make a second to that. All right. <laughs> City Clerk, call the roll on that motion. In fact, a lot of times during main commission reports, we don't really do it via motion. We just have to make sure we have consensus. But you've made a motion, so we'll take it. City Clerk, call the roll. Vice Mayor Colodi. That's to have it on the, the next postpone agenda. it, yes. yes. Yeah. Commissioner Sachs? Yes. Mayor Owen? Yes. Commissioner McGurk? Yes. Commissioner Hartman? No. Good <laughs> 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 uh, That wouldn't have been funny three hours ago, but at this point it's funny. I thought we were getting out here early tonight, too. All right. I told you. I tried. We I have, have a tried. way of making the impossible possible. I have tried every single item. I've said briefly, I think, every single time someone has spoken. <laughs> I tried my best. Now Carrie has the coronavirus. All right. Um, who has I haven't talked yet. I, I got nothing, gentlemen. I had, st I had stuff, but y'all have beat it out of me. <laughs> I've lost the will to, to debate anything further. <laughs> City manager report. Colin? Um, Chief. Self-explanatory. The only the item that there is I've discussed during I wouldn't the, open it. Uh, I was just pointing it out to you. <laughs> Go ahead. 
Go ahead, Carl. I discussed during the briefings with the other commissioners except you, Mayor. Um, oh, I forgot to call you. The advertising authority, they, uh, Debbie Meals, uh, she has approached me. They are interested to uh, lease the Connors Library, which is the one that we have the CRA in. So I mentioned to her that this is a city commission decision, and also I have some staff I have to relocate. So right now I only have one staff, and we, we hire the CRA, Economic Development, I have two. The only location that I have for them right now is this room right here where we're in, and it would not be available until we move out. That's if you guys decide to not keep it as a, a meeting room. Or out there at 2650 where uh, development services, and that is they're moving back at the end of this year. So it seems like the commission was divided on uh, whether we want to keep discussion with it or not. So I need to have a consensus. Should I could continue talking to her or not? And they are, you know, I mentioned to her that we will be, uh, if she leases it, uh, that she has to pay the current uh, rate fee for square footage on this area. Okay. Um, my, since I'm the one you haven't talked to yet, I'll just tell you my thoughts and then we'll go down the line. Um, I would like to see us, I mean, I, there were a lot of other kind of ifs and contingencies in there. And so I think this has to be a broader conversation about, you know, are we going to use this? Do we want to sell that property up there? You know, we, we've got the chambers in that building. we got other city-owned properties that people are leasing that, you know, we may be talking about at some point in the future. So I, I think, you know, I don't know what her timeline is, if she's, like, at the end of a lease and needs to make a decision. Trying, or she's trying to, I guess, they're, they're preparing the budget, so she wanted to do yeah. something on the budget. Um, the building 2650... Um, I, let me be clear. I didn't want to have all those debates right now. I just no, saying, no, not, I think I'm we need to have all those. So I would like to see this added. If there's no timeline from her point, I think we it's probably meritous of a larger discussion, kind of about the plans for all those related uh, buildings. I do support trying to bring them downtown. I think it doesn't make sense that they're out there where they're at. You know, whether that's in a city building, which is the only one we would care about. Otherwise, it's you know their private thing to do whatever they want. But so I, I think it's worth a discussion, but that's my that's my thoughts. I don't know if we wanted to. I, I can't. I don't have enough about all those other things to make a decision on that one item without talking about yeah. those others. I just want to, if yeah. if you're interested in continuing discussion, and we'll have to come back obviously with more details for you. But I don't. So I'm interested. Is do we have who else is anybody not interested in continuing the discussion? Mr. Mayor, I'm not interested in continuing discussion regarding the Connor Library. Okay. I think there's too many dominoes to have to line up to make a decision now. So I, I think we should put it off till we get ourselves in so order. don't even talk about it anymore. Just let's get in there, and then we'll figure it out and yes. recommend her just do a short-term lease, and maybe it'll work out in the future. Yes. All right, to get those two gentlemen on my left, will you? Pleasure. Um, I'd discuss it, but. All right, Commissioner Hartman. I, I support the rest of the commission. <laughs> Which rest of the commission? We can, we can continue our discussion, but I don't think that he needs to continue his discussion at this point in time because there's too many uncertainties. Yeah. Okay. So I think you've got your direction. I think basically, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I think you've got it. No, I, I would stop the discussion. What I heard, what I heard was, I think the hurdle to get them into the Connors Library, there's probably too many downloads that have to line up in a very short order. My suggestion, if she's open to suggestions, would be. You know, maybe don't lock herself into a five-year lease. If she could get a year, a lot of thoughts going to change in a year. And I think there might be some opportunities as we look at a lot of other a lot of other dominoes, as you put it. Is that a fair assessment of where we landed, gentlemen? Sure. I don't want to speak for the commission, but it's what I heard. I right. give you a copy of this from the round table yesterday. So okay, it's got uh, three powerpoints by the health departments by the uh, TPO and then the affordable housing. So. Okay. Any questions from the commission of the city manager on anything in the report? Hearing none, city attorney report. So, I'm sorry, clerk report. City clerk, anything to report? Nothing. It's your clerk, turn. No, I don't have to <laughs> no, no, thank you. <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> I'll take a pass. <laughs> Who was this? Somebody tried to pass on a vote? <laughs> Last time. I'll pass. All right, gentlemen, it's been an interesting one. I appreciate everyone's patience.
This meeting is adjourned. Oh, yes. Do you want a stop sign? <laughs> so the, I will tell you, the meeting is officially adjourned. I'm happy to come talk to you before then. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I was wondering why you were here. I,